I think he's trying to say, you know, you were wrong. Yeah, I like the part where he says, you know, you were wrong. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just, you know, I could, I could be taking that out of context. <laughs> I can do all things by taking a verse out of context. Hey, you know, Philippians, uh, what is that, 411? 413. 413? Yeah, sure. It's, it's, it's on my keychain. <laughs> it was a gift from my, my wife. <laughs> oh. Ironically. <clears throat> yeah, I, I like the, the... Yeah, I'm not good at the... Uh, I, I, apparently there's a way, I guess, to, if you're doing streaming... And I guess if I wanted to really do it right, like just do it to where you're you're pushing a button or something. Oh. And it just kind of, you know, in order for like a like an intro, like is there like a specific intro you can set, you know, or like just or just a matter of just being prepared better, hmm. or incapable of being. <laughs> mm -hmm. Lord help us. Lord help us. I hear the coffee mug hitting the table. <laughs> oh, that's embarrassing. It's, it's private. <laughs> Yahoo. Um, it, it's funny because now that I'm thinking about like what's you know any specific thing to go into, um, obviously other than where Irenaeus, you know, which, I mean not Irenaeus, um, uh, what's his face. Ignatius, but um, I'm still thinking of, of gravitating back to to Trinitarian stuff, mm. um, and 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 looking at um, at what's his name, what's his face, uh, Boethius. Although I gotta say, when it comes to let's just say scholarship. Well, let me 
Let me share something real quick here. Get me to share something right quick. Right over here. Show them some scholarship. Yeah, what takes so long, because there used to be a way to, when you start, well, I'm not even going to go into it, but something basically really irritating. But trying to get it to where like a film trip type of thing, which by the way, I still got to point out again how the description of the of the candle of the candlestick was described like like heaven like the heavens and like if you look at the this is the, the heavens like a globe coming down from the sky um like this would represent that like jutting down i mean obviously it's it's it's, it's, it's two-dimensional image mm -hmm. as far as the way it, it was viewed um and then yeah, the seven spirits of God come here. That's something I could do because that was originally what I was thinking as, as like going through a lot of these. These were my original. Um, you know, the, you know I, didn't, I didn't even think of that. I'm such an idiot. Because, you know, you, you've been talking about um, reviewing some of these old, you know, these church fathers that I've been doing. Yeah. And I've been like, you know, that well now time's passing. And I, I reviewed some with Kevin, which was really great. Um, but it, you know, it's dawned on me as far as as going back and reviewing any of them. Uh, on a lot of them, I have like, especially the Irenaeus stuff. Um, it, well, not less less the um, the heresies, but the apostolic teachings. The first Irenaeus thing that I did, where right. it's just like. This is what the apostles taught. Right. Because um, I have a lot of, of uh, like I said, like 200, you know, he quotes the Bible like 200 sometimes. So I made like all these different verses. But going through the specific verses, I can probably remember why they were quoted in context mm -hmm. um, and uh, discuss. Because um, a lot of, because basically all of them were trying to point to the Lord. I, I found um, this understand. I was gonna show. I'm gonna go back. So check this out. This is just now. This this is not complete. This is not even showing everything by a long shot. Um, matter of fact, some stuff is is remarkably absent. Um, when it comes down to it. <clears throat> So can you see that okay? Yes. So this is what I'm on now, right? Because you're saying, well, whenever you're done doing these church fathers, you know, let's talk, let's do some some streams about them. Yes. So here's Ignatius, right? Now I'm not doing the ones that are called spurious. I'm also not doing the martyrdom because the martyrdom is also, I mean, the martyrdom was written in the Middle Ages. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's sort of like a fictional reaccounting. Of when he was martyred. Okay. Um, so anyway, there's the Ignatius. Look over on the right. You see this? See how long this list is? <laughs> wow. Now, granted, the older ones are the ones that you're probably I probably already talked about. Right. Um, when it comes down, like you know, Ignatius. Here's Irenaeus right here. Now, if you notice, you know, that's against heresies. The fragments, now the fragments is inter would be interesting to to go over. Mm. Um, but um, but notice the on the Apostolic Fathers for some reason isn't here. But um, so because it, it, there's the second century, right? There isn't a lot of first century. Because one, the first century is the gospel, mostly the gospels. I mean, but Barnabas, I believe, Barnabas, like we've already saw, mm -hmm. and uh, what's the other one? Um, Barnabas and Clement. Clement, yeah. Uh, were around now. Barnabas was it seems like later nineties, maybe in the hundred. Like you know, it's kind of 
Now this Ignatius is getting up into 107 is, is from, from what it seems. I mean, there's all kinds of scholarship. I'm just going to go with 107. And you're convinced that the Barnabas is the actual Barnabas with Paul, right? And the Clement being the Clement that was mentioned by Paul. Well, I mean, loosely convinced. Mm, okay. Like, there's only so much I can, you know, one can go off of. You know, but again, like I've like I've I've said quite arrogantly of myself, like a lot of the scholar, like we we have access to a lot of the same scholarship that people did back in the day, where they had to travel to libraries and put together all this kind of stuff. Where about we can we 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 can look it up. <laughs> and I mean, that's literally internet scholarships, which I know isn't, you know, isn't necessarily credible, but I, I think, you know, we can make, make it, edu but, but again, I, I don't think there is enough there though, that where I can, you can say specifically for sure it's within tradition. We know mm -hmm. um, what's interesting is there are parts where, um, where uh, Irenaeus talks about it. Um, Irenaeus talks, he quotes one of the letters of Ignatius and Isubius um, actually talks about all, like, quote, like, discusses all seven letters and, and obviously read them. Um, now, Isubius is later on in the 300s. So, and so that's the thing, like, once you get to the 300s uh in the, the mid 300 and obviously that's when christianity becomes there's even becomes legal world. what the heck that's when christianity becomes legal so obviously you're going to get more stuff so a lot of this stuff here is from the three from, from, exists from that time from the 300s um and well i'm sorry the 200s there is there's also a lot of stuff from the 200s as well before christianity was legal as well so let, let me let me not uh get that wrong now some of these say the dates but the late 200s and interestingly enough you know because christianity didn't fully become legal until you know the th like 320 i think um so in the early 200s in the late 200s and stuff uh, I, I really need to start remembering this stuff but you know you had various persecutions happening um so isubius right born 265 so let me give you a really quick lesson on isubius because I'm, I'm thinking of doing one of his things at some point his church history right there is is basically Everything that people think they know about why the Gospels were written, how they were written, who wrote them, all that kind of stuff. Um, a majority of that comes from this guy's writings. This one guy's writings. Wow. Now, if you... And that's his church history. And let's see what how it's organized here. Oops, clicked over the wrong thing. <laughs> so see, that's organized in the ten books. So I'm thinking about doing these books now. There, there already exists an audiobook of it, but I would like to do it enough to like to to learn it. Um, because I've already listened to it like multiple times, like the, the audio book that exists on YouTube of this. So it's interesting. Mm -hmm. And it starts obviously with uh, you know the apostles and stuff, but then it goes on to modern day, um, to when he's alive and Constantine's alive. That would be very interesting. And like one of the stories he tells, I mean, like well, one of them brought me to tears, man, because one of the basically one of the emperors. Uh, had heard or one of the governors or somebody basically had heard that so and so was a was a descendant of uh of james or somebody mm. yeah of james oh he, dude okay so I, I thought of something here the idea of the perpetual virginity of mary mm -hmm. 
So check this out. What if it was an actual rumor spread by Christians on purpose, not theolo- not for theological reasons, although it became theological, but but maybe mainly, or maybe it was was originally theological, but then a bunch of people were like, "Hey, why don't we just allow this to spread in order to protect the descendants of uh, or, the, or the relatives of of the Lord, mm. the actual children of Jesus, the the, the relatives of James, that, because 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 uh, one of the things that Subius tells is the um, yeah, like I said, somebody who's claimed to be a descendant of, of James. I believe I got. I'm getting this right. Um, they, they rounded him up, and and basically they said they expected them to be like, like rich, you know, and like right. powerful. And they were like, "Aren't you related to to this Lord, you know, these Christians?" And they looked at their hands and saw that they were like hard. And they said, "All we have is like, you know, this this meager like." And he just he let you just let him go. <laughs> You know, when they're writing about it. So when Asubius is writing about that, you know, like like the Lord has protected them, you know. Like that's that's, a, that's very interesting how he protected them, too. Uh, the assumption that they would have uh, and the reality of who they are allowed him to uh, assume that this couldn't be him, you know. Yeah, the Romans would just be perplexed. you are like, what? Well, like why aren't you uh why aren't you exploiting your uh, circumstances better uh exploiting the people better you know wow that is pretty awesome <laughs> so uh and and that's where the life of Constantine that he wrote and this is why everybody hates Asubius for the most part, I mean, people, you know, people, people talk about the, you know, his how how historical he he isn't, or whatever, mm-hmm. like, like a uh, ace philosophy, like, and I brought him up recently, said like, oh, he's he wouldn't even be considered a scholar today, and I'm like, even saying that is just like stupid, <laughs> like, like okay, like a b- big deal, like he specific, I mean, the guy writes. Like in the beginning of church history, he's like, "Yeah, I'm trying to write this," and I mean, he's a. If you want to call him a bias source, I mean, whatever. But he, he literally is writing, "I'm trying to write this in order to be unbiased and then report the blah 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 blah." You know, he's he knows what he's doing. So I mean, the idea that it's he's like a completely illegitimate source for history, as whatever history goes, is just stupid. It really is <laughs> when it comes down to it. And and I think a lot of it is from the interfighting between Christian sects, sectarianism, you know. Right. And it, like I said, a lot of it's because of this life of Constantine. Yeah, there's and a lot. What we got here, the praise of Constantine. Mm. <laughs> How long is this? Look at this. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> yeah. It's a, uh, and I originally I remember I hate I hated Asubius in general because of just be, just because of what I heard the, the, the little things I would piece together like I had a lot of information but I didn't have a lot of complete information and uh, and we just piece together certain stuff. Um, did I make a hashtag? Oh, no, that's just random. Oh, that's right. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it's the praise of Constantine. But what, when I went through the, um, that, uh, what you call it, the, the martyrdom of Palestine, the martyrs of Palestine, which, see, interestingly enough, that's not on here. Um, although it might be included in church history, but it's, I don't see it. Oh, wait, they're an appendix of martyrs of Palestine. So it is so included there because I did, I did do that. Um, where I put the, I think I think you've seen that, or you've, you've I've told you about it. Yeah. But when I did that, I realized because he's because the martyrdom happened up until Constantine. So you know, so again, that's that's where it makes sense to me that the early Christians would say, "Oh, this dude's great. He's our great, uh, you know, 
well, you know, I'm going to say savior, but obviously that's, that's what happened. And again, when I think about stuff like Christian nationalism, um, that's that type of I, that, that type of attitude I think is what grew in in Rome when it came to Christian Romanism. <laughs> You know, like, oh, like, you know, people are look at America, like the way Americans are, uh, the way Americans are doing their thing. Um, so the, the, but some of these larger ones here, so there's the Clement. So yeah, there's the other, the, the Spurry, like there's a bunch of other, there's a few other works of Clement that I'm not really bothering with. I mean, but as far as like validating who, who did these things, I mean, because uh, the, the Clement letters, they, they don't say this is from Clement. It really is from, they've just always been called that. And when you read like Asubius who discusses it, um, I think Irenaeus, if I'm remembering, so now I'm already forgetting, like talks about the these other letters um so and that that's one of the ways that they validate these things and like Irenaeus also talks about like the second epistle of Clement and he's like yeah this thing's probably bogus so even already at that time they were they were like yeah these things are are not good so that's the thing. It's kind of like, all right, well, what's your criteria for, for believing something like that? Um, you know, is there a reason to not believe it? Like somebody made it up once, are we to assume that it was, you know, it's all, I mean, it seemed, to, it seemed to me to not believe it is more of a conspiracy theory um, than to think that, that all of the stuff needs to just be thrown out the window, which is how a lot of people take it. Yeah. Yeah. Throwing the baby with the bathwater out. I, I've always learned this chew up what's good and spit out what's bad. Um, I was taught that at the beginning of my walk with Christ. And at first, I looked at it as lethal and dangerous. Um, but then when I started experiencing, you know, why it's important, um, I mean, there, there's a lot of things that I learned from people that I disagree with on many other things, you know, so. Well, that's where, when I start to get to the later Christians, you know, I'm going to get into, but I, I think it's probably going to start when I get to Augustine. But there is a portion, so the, I told you there's a whole other writing, um, there's actually there's there's a couple of them actually against heresies like there's Irenaeus is against heresies but there are an other another there's another against heresies from right when Irenaeus is writing there's a there's one from like 40 years later um, by a guy named Epiphanius um, who has a whole bunch I wonder if he's I don't even know if he's on this list um, because he has. No, so Epiphanius isn't even on here. So Epiphanius has one of the, the hugest against heresies. It has its own name. Um, I can't think of what the name is. Um, but yeah, he's not even on this this giant list. Epiphanius from, from I mean, because and then Epiphanius when he got to um, let me see what what year he was specifically actually before I start talking out of my wazoo. Epif hey, I, I will be right back, Kelly. I, I gotta use the men's room. I'll be right back. Um, yeah, Epiphanius, then he was from Cyprus, so he was around the three. So, what did it say when he was born? 310, 320. So, he was in the mid 300s, this Epiphanius guy. And he's not even on that list. Why would he be left off of there? Probably because he's like, 
Oh no, he's so he's venerated in both Catholicism and he's still, I I don't know why he's left off the list. Um, because there are other websites that have more complete lists. That was just the easiest one that I had up. The Panarion, book one, book two, and three. Like there's all these uh works that have survived by this guy. Um, from the two on from the, yeah. The, oh wait, wait, wait. See, am I getting that wrong already? What year is it? The born in three twenty three hundred. So he was around the, the mid three hundreds. So he would have been born while Christians were being persecuted. And uh, by the time he was growing up, Christianity was just becoming uh, legalized. So it's, I, I just, I really like, uh, re, you know, getting into these guys and just imagining the type of world that they're, that they're living in uh, when it comes down to, I mean, obviously, I mean, a more hard lifestyle, but when it comes to people's uh, general philosophies and living side by side with, uh, with, 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 with pagans and with all, I mean, it's, it's, it, I think the modern world is becoming more and more like, uh, like these views, or I mean, like, like the, these times, uh, back then. For sure, but but again, the unfortunate stuff is uh, it's how yeah a lot of this stuff because uh, well it starts to branch off because depending on your particular flavor of Catholicism, uh, you have like Gregory of Nyssa and. Uh, these other guys of uh, the, the Cappadocian fathers. Um, what year was Gregory of Nyssa? I think these these other guys are the three hundreds as well. Um, and that's where they basically it, 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 it seems like once Christianity stops getting persecuted, uh, you know, the heresy has a lot more freedom to uh, to spread. That's a fact, in my opinion, anyway. Back. Yeah. The Cappadocian Fathers, he died after three, so yeah, the mid 300s. So the, the 300s, Paul, um, just, just keep this in mind. The okay. Christianity became uh, legalized in the three, three, well, you know what? Let me stop guessing the specific day. Let me see precisely when. Uh, I believe it was like 320. But hold up. I'm not going to Google it. <laughs> um, it's not precisely. You're, you're not, yeah, I'm just going to Google 313. Okay. So three. So I was thinking 320 because just like a round roundabout. But the year 313 AD, the Edict of Milan. Okay, I know this stuff, but I, the longer I go without thinking about it, I will eventually just simply forget it. So, Paul. Yes. The Edict of Milan. Have you ever heard of that? No. Uh, that's where... Um, now, Milan at the time was Mediolanum in northern Italy. So that's when Constantine got together and made an edict... Saying Christianity was legal now. So that's the year 313. So I, I like to compare it to modern day. To think like, all right, 1913, 313, you know, because then it's like, all right, so if it was, and that way when I'm thinking of like, oh, this this one guy was around alive in the 360s. Mm -hmm. So then it's like, all right, so if it was somebody from the 1960s, what did they think of people from 1913? Like, okay, well, my grandfather was born in 1913. So, you know, he would have known somebody that was, Walking around in the night, you know, in the three nineties and the four tens, and you know, the four tens would be like the twenty tens, just to kind of give an idea of like people's perspectives. I see. That's very uh, interesting. 
And from what authority was it that legalized Christianity? Uh, well, is that a trick question? I'm not. I, I'm not really becoming a Catholic, despite what uh, <laughs> what people are. No, I wasn't inferring that. <laughs> well, uh, legal. So well, let's talk about the, the 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 philosophy of that particular type of stuff. Um, Laws, what, what's legalization? So we have laws. So we have a, a nation that some people are living in, a society, um, a, a legislature, right? So, so no, I mean, the answer to the question is, is, is the Rome, the Roman government, right? Yes. Well, it looks like Yahoo has read, uh, well, I don't know if you read it. Is familiar with the Panarion. He says the yeah. A lot of this artwork, man. Um, that's sort of like they started doing all this laser restoration of these uh, Roman catacombs from like the second century, and there's some other ones from the second century from these earlier places of like a lot of them. Are, some of them are Jewish. But they show like they show like Moses wearing a toga, but I mean the it's the when they they've restored them man, they look like I mean it's amazing. It, it reminds me of like you know you ever see those AI restored like nineteen twenties videos that look like they're from yesterday. Wow. Oh, you never saw those? Oh, I've taken videos and uh and restored them and like the they've made like the speed corrected and the, the coloring and it looks like it was filmed with camcorder you know and they got and they've restored videos from the 18 1890s hmm. that's what a lot of this stuff is like these are actual these are from tombs but from being restored they're like um Actually, here's a good little, uh, there you have something up there. Here's the uh, a map of the earliest, you see that? Nah, it's not really. The early churches. Oh, you know what I can bring up here? As a sort of, because the, 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 the video that I'm doing, right? Mm -hmm. I ended up making this so that I can make a, like make a, what you call it, kind of placeholders, because at certain points in the video where he mentions, oh, you know, peace to Smyrna uh, from Troas and, and the Lord, you know. So I'll, like, br I'll bring up this as a map, just sort of as a, sort of as a reference. Like, I mean, where I happen to be at is in Troas and Smyrna. But over here, I've I gone, I went and found where all these churches were. I mean, some of them, like, like Magnesia is where, where Ignatius wrote one of his letters. Um, like there's like a couple different Magnesias. Mm -hmm. um, so then I went and they're all hidden up, but then I marked off where all of these. Original churches. Just uncheck them all. So these would have been churches around, like the at least before the one twenties, because as far as I could tell, these were the major churches that existed in, in the time of Ignatius, assuming that the one oh seven date for when he wrote them is correct. Uh, the Christian churches. So you got to figure if John was like in the nineties. Is a nice round number to, for people to remember. Um, now we got Barnabas was or Clement was writing, and even before that. So I mean, before, but but as soon as we get to the one, the one o oh something, you know, mm -hmm. it's uh, that's when we're starting to get into people that still were around. Like it's it's it's. I, I can't imagine people just being aware that the Lord 
you know, that they are talking, talking to people that like knew the Lord, like, like talk, talk to them face to face. You know what I mean? I mean, obviously they, we know the Lord, but people that like, and what's, what's great when you read some of these writers, like, it's like they, they make reference to it, you know? They're like, oh, he was only a few generations ago. Or like, you know, like Irenaeus, like he doesn't hesitate to, <laughs> to talk about it when he's like, yeah, I knew Polycarp. Who knew John, you know? That's very interesting. And how many how many miles do you think this is, Kelly? Like w within all these churches, like in this broad span here, how far? Like, like if it was to be measured, the distance from Corinth to uh, what's over here on the very end, Jerusalem. Oops. Um, well, down here, uh, it's in kilometers. That's what the heck's a kilometer. How many kilometers is it? I I think we can figure it out. Uh, can you see the bottom there? No. Can you tell me the number? Uh, all right. Well, Cyprus is about a uh, well, Cyprus, I believe, is about a hundred miles. Um, from. Actually, you know what? So Jer Israel is about the size of New Jersey. Do you know? But do you know anything about? But you're from the Midwest. You don't know anything about New Jersey. What do you mean? I'm from the Midwest. Isn't that part of just Detroit, the Midwest? What? Aren't you from Detroit? Michigan. Michigan's not in Detroit. <laughs> You don't know Wait, where Michigan's at? Detroit, Chicago, Michigan. Yeah. Wait, all right, I'm I'm totally confused now. We're East Side. I don't know any of this stuff. I'm 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 a hillbilly from Baltimore. He's from South Baltimore. Yeah, you need to get out of the Inner Harbor every now and then. <laughs> you, you know, I, you, you know, I, I was stationed in, Balt, you know, in Aberdeen Proving Ground. Had my hairnet. My, my mom had her hairnets, too, her hairnet too tight. Yeah, I live in Tennessee and Michigan, man, most of my life. So I've lived in Texas. I was in the Midwest for a little while. Um, but yeah, I've, I've lived in Kentucky. I've lived in um, Maryland, all over Michigan, and. Well, the, what what what? Uh, re reference would work for you. Do you think, because uh, I know, hold on, let me see something here, because I believe, let me see if I can just find, how long is Cyprus? How big is Cyprus? Because I, re I remember correctly, Cyprus itself is like a really good... Well, j just to kind of keep like a, a figure in your head, you know, one kilometer is what, like 0.6 of a mile or something. So, something like that. I just remember Cyprus is like exactly like on a map, not exactly, but like pretty much. Cut the kilometers in half and add a tenth, and you'll be pretty accurate. Well, I mean, I can see down there what 10 kilometers is, and I can see like Cyprus itself altogether is like 200 kilometers. So that's why it makes me think that, uh, it might be a hundred miles exactly, or something, something like that. As far about, as like, about one hundred twenty miles, yeah, something like that. I mean, as far as well, well, check it out. I mean, you can tell what a because we can zoom in as far as streets, so you can tell exactly how big these things are. Right. When it comes down to it, which church you want to start at? So yeah, I did a, I did a like one of the one of the first streams I did was following the uh, the journeys of Paul. Using one of these, mm, that'd be awesome. Um, because it's interesting to kind of think about. I mean, you can see like these obviously these ancient peoples. You know, had all these. You, know, you can see where these valleys between these mountains. So where Paul was traveling. Uh, well, I mean, you know, we can follow him in Acts. 
true. That's what X is, right? Going up through yes. Lystra, Icarnia, that's where, what would happen? Is that where uh, him and Barnabas was uh, were worshipped? Is that where that happened? And then, uh, or was that in Libya? I can't remember now. You know what? Now I'm going to look it up. Look it up. Paul worshipped. In the Bible, Mercury, him and Barnabas. Oh, where we got? We got no. I'm just gonna jump out. Chief speaker. Yeah, Lystra. Okay. See, that's one of those things where I don't remember why I remember that. I just remember just from like just kind of knowing, <laughs> just from just having it just. You know, you, you run over something so much, it's just going to become an imprint. But so you got an idea of like what 100 miles is? Yeah. So these churches here are what are mentioned in the book of Acts. Because um, we know, I, I think, was it Barnabas? Did he come from which? I think Barnabas himself came from Cyprus. Hmm. Um, and there's where Paul's from, obviously. Now his area is now some of these churches are actually nothing. There's nothing there now but mounds and lumps that you can you can barely even tell a town was there. Um, others are just they're just a huge city. Yeah, and Barnabas' name was Joseph, right? Like, look at this village. This is Lystra, where they were worshipped. Got these mounds right here. That's where the that's where the ruins are. Like the that's where the original places were. Barnabas was son of encouragement. And you like travel down the road. Oh, we're gonna go over to Derby on our way over to Poseidia, Antioch of oh, Poseidia. This is all like, well, that's that's all farms, farms, farms now. A lot of yeah. it, it's hard to tell just how much <laughs> land that is to cover. Yeah. So Barnabas' his name was Joseph. He was a Levite from Cyprus. And they called him Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. We were talking about that earlier, how names had inference. You know, names that were given because we were talking about Saul and Paul. And then you, you mentioned that it was just another translation. Um, well, I didn't mean it like diminutive. <laughs> Yeah, but but I can't help but see sometimes that there was reasoning, you know, for the name. Well, the Lord, I, I you know, I'm sure you believe the Lord absolutely loves uh, loves a certain level of irony. <laughs> oh yeah, and I mean, look at the Hebrew people. Everything they do has meaning. Everything they say has meaning. There is nothing that's just, uh, you know, sustenance. It's just, it's all meaningful or without sustenance. I wonder if I can. Yeah, I Change. Let's see if I can actually change the. I guess not. Change the font size. Just one. When I put. Now there's your distance. Huh. Hmm. See, I hate technology so much, even though I'm a, a IT professional. Yes. And I'm not. So there you go. 
So there you go. Boom, 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 boom. Over there it says how many miles. Miles. I'm a little... Starting you. Yeah. My triune uh, thumbnail is covering it up. So there's where Barnabas is from. The island of Cyprus, ancient kingdom, Jerusalem, right in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> no water source, no roof. <laughs> wow. I love maps, man. I think, uh, I think this is uh, what Beersheba and uh, the Jordan River. See it? Yeah. That's the Lord's work. The Jordan River coming down. And what is that? A harp? Did, the, did somebody did drop a harp out of the sky? And what is that? That is the Galilee Sea. Huh. Isn't it shaped like a harp? It's a. Uh... I think I, I see John remember. Calvin in it. I think I see John Calvin in it. You look at it real hard. Kinesaret? Or Ken looks like it looks like a guy with a mustache. Not the Kinesaret. I don't know. <laughs> you look at anything long enough, it can become many things. Well, no, the word. I think the word. Uh, I think the word he word for harp in Hebrew is the. Uh, well, I'm going to look that up now. This is supposed to be a. Hold up. I'm going to go to Blue Letter Bible. Here, let me do this live here. You know, I didn't even. I didn't put creamer in my coffee. Or anything. So I bought a whole box full of Cadbury eggs because they were like on sale for 29 cents. Don't be a girly man. <laughs> Drink it straight. Don't be a girly man. Um, what was I looking up? Blue Letter Bible, BLB. What's this? Hmm. That's pretty large. Let's yes. just look up a word harp. Harp, it's a harp. You play the harp, Sonny. Oh, you play the harp pretty well. Oh, I don't see the word here, Sonny. I think I'll go back. Oh, let's just go to the tools. For the tools, look at each of the words. Oh, we're going to scroll down a lot. Go. There we are. Kinor. Kinoreth. Okay, so, yeah, the word for, uh, the other word for uh, Galilee is Kinoreth. With Galilee, C. So that's lyre or harp. Kinor. Twang, suffix, la la la, the music, sacred music, kithera, harp, musical, it said rejoicing or sorrowing. We see the word here in Greek, kithera, sithera. And now I'm going to look up Galilee. Because I think it's, I think it's just simply called a different word anyway. So it's not going to, this isn't going to show me what. I'm looking up. I play a six string harp. Galil. Because the word Galil, Galilee is named after Galilee. A circuit or a district. Matter of fact, I just heard a, a nice teaching which involved Galil from. I don't see it here. Numbers? But they were specifically, the word they used was circle. And they, anyway, I don't want to get into that. But I'm just thinking because of the different words for Galilee Sea. Well, Galilee is the region anyway. 
I don't know, man. Every once in a while, I get just very upset <coughs> with Galilee, the Sea of Galilee, just kind of inexplicably, like I'm doing right now. So you're going to have to get me to talk about something else. Okay. So, <laughs> so you believe it looks like, it, I mean, I know I'm still talking about it, but you believe it's in the shape of a heart. And that's the reason for that? Or is there other reasons? Uh Well, it's interesting because it's not like people had airplanes back then. Right. Well, it, it, is, in the it, it, it's, it is in the shape of a heart. I'm just trying to see the word because I I know that the word was like, it had it was also referred to as kinnerate, but I can't find any evidence of that anymore. Well, well they had maps back then without airplanes, right? So, yes, you're right. Actually, the Sea of Galilee. Kinneret, there we go. So that's just the Sea of Galilee. So yeah, so Galil itself just means, but that's the thing. I, I, I'm, I'm assuming that Galilee is named. I thought it was named. It just means so. Galil's name means district or circle. Okay. So clearly, there's a lot of districts. So there's a whole bunch. Of, there's Different, you should probably find it using different spots, but because I don't know why it seems like a very general name for a specific place. Galilee of the Nations, Galil Hagoyim, Galil. I don't understand Hebrew at all. These are men of Galileans, and we hear them in our own language. So, so Lake Kinneret. Now I'm wondering, like, who called it Kinneret? Or is it just us? There we go. Sea of Kinneret. Hebrew name Kinneret comes from the Hebrew Bible, where it appears as Sea of Kinneret in Numbers. Joshua spelled Kinneret. That's the numbers you were looking for, right? Yeah. This name was... or. Not specifically. I was thinking of where they used the word, and he was using the Hebrew word. I think it might have been because it was going through the book of Numbers. So maybe. And there's the. The. Uh, topology. Mm -hmm. Or whatever that is with underwater. <laughs> Well, it's crazy just to look at that and just think, like, you know for a fact that the Lord walked somewhere on here. Yeah. And around here and crossed this on boat. Like, the Lord was here. Like, I can't, dude, I couldn't, I, I, it just makes me <coughs> weep thinking about living there. Like, if I lived there, like, I've had dreams where I like, I like walking around and it's like, I, I had a dream. I've had a couple of dreams like this. It's like a reoccurring dream of like walking around uh, and I'm like on a beach and I'm like, what's going on? And I don't really know where I am. And, um, and I look off in the horizon and, and it's weird because the horizon will look like these crazy, look like I'm at like, like King's Dominion or something or like Disney. We're like, it'd be like these crazy, like just, insane looking like sci-fi buildings and, and and you know like like super tall like going off into the, the sky and the horizon and then there's like you know the water and i remember uh, and somebody's walking and there's people just sitting around on the beach like it's like ocean city you know and it was just kind of like just a bunch of there's people everywhere and i just look at some somebody walking by and i'm like is this the sea of galilee and they're just like yeah <laughs> and i was like and I just like got like just fell down on my knees and like buried my face in the sand. I was just like, yes, like. Then I woke up at some point. <laughs> Is that a reoccurring dream or? Uh, of like 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 being around like the area and like just seeing, sort of like the cities in the horizon. I mean, it's. I mean, I don't think there's something to it. I mean, obviously, if, you know, if you think so much about such things, and it's like I have recurring dreams of. Uh, 
of nuclear bomb of nuclear holocaust too so <laughs> mm -hmm. that's just because i grew up watching a lot of tv in the 80s <laughs> yeah and it has its own significance right but in this it has its own significance also see i i don't like to be folky or you know or gnostic or anything like that i'm not going to say that but in the bible there was dreams that are interpreted uh there were things that were meaningful um it says that your daughters will dream dreams and your daughters and sons uh so there you know not to get too much into like okay let's start just saying things we don't know what the world we're talking about but to say that there is no significance or people can't have a dream or God doesn't, you know, work through that. Uh, biblically, I don't think you can prove that. Does it still happen today? I don't know. You know, maybe so. Who knows? But the significance to you, even in that, you said it made you weep in your dream. Um, there has to be some kind of significance to that. Like just the, uh, cause when you were talking to me about that, what I was actually thinking is, you know, how many people say, you know, I used to think it was wrong to say this, like you should feel the presence of the Lord, whether you're in Jerusalem or not, it's not geography that connects us, you know, and all this, but just to imagine, like you said, this right here is where Jesus walked on the water. This is where he, uh, saved Peter from drowning, you know, uh, this is where Peter stepped out in his faith, you know. So it's not without significance that they can be looked at as a reality. For real. It's, well, so Tolkien described uh, it as sort of interesting by way of a mixing of history with, with myth, you know, mix it with, or with, with, you know, it's the human mind and human culture has, uh, has these things having to do with, uh, with what's real, what's not, whatever. Oops. Sorry, I'm messing around with it. And, and the thing with Jesus is, you know, that's, it's a, it's like a meeting place between that that myth and something real literally happened now the farther obviously the farther away we get from uh from the time that it happened it's like well we don't really know what really happened but i mean if there were people and this is the thing i would also challenge an atheist on i mean when it comes down to it it's like if you don't believe there were people as zealous as you know you and me for the lord and enough throughout history that it couldn't it wouldn't have been preserved properly you know like am i so special are you so special no or, no but if god chose you for something you know gifted you in such a way um it is what it I, I, again my my trust is that god is going to preserve it uh, who he uses is meaning, you know, and to me, it's almost meaningless. Uh, not without, how can I say it? Not without respect for any, you know, hardships they went through or uh, who can imagine, you know, back then just living life was a hardship compared to what we have now. So, yeah, I can imagine, you know, uh, our pastor, preach this one time he said have you ever considered this a lot of you don't want to get on a bus or get on a van and go visit somebody tell them about jesus and back in the day people were walking hundreds of miles and getting shipwrecked and doing everything to bring the gospel to people you know so you might be worried the van doesn't have air conditioning you know what i mean yeah. it, it is pretty pathetic sometimes when you think about it
Yeah, there's what's left of Caesarea Philippi. Not much. Sidon. What else we got? What was the other place? I just looked at it. Uh... Capernaum. Capernaum, as I always say. Um, uh, look at that nice archaeological site. Barely dug out. Probably all the rest of that is looks like that if they dug it out. Right on the water. They probably just think with all the archaeological things. I mean, you got to figure people that were alive and then like like what I was just saying the. In the 300s or the 200, like, well, by the time the 300s came, because here's the thing, man. Constantine's mom, uh, she was she was a big time Jesus freak. <laughs> yeah. And she apparently claimed to have visions from the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, and. That told her where different things were around Jerusalem when she visited, mm. and and that's where a lot of the stuff got marked. Like, oh, here's where the tomb is. Here's yeah. where the uh, didn't Jesus go into Capernaum and and on the Sabbath day, and he uh, Uh, I really can I? I have. I thought I had. Do I? I'm trying to remember. Capernaum. I believe that's when he was teaching them, them on the Sabbath day. Uh, now, if I knew I was going to do this, I would have actually installed Google Earth. But no biggie. There's that. There's the old city. That little tiny. That's the original city. See the walls. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or the outline, rather. And uh, the city of David. So the original city, you know what a really cool video is? I kind of want to watch it now, but now I'm worried about kind of, I mean, it, I doubt the person would, but basically he goes through and he shows the original topology of the place. Now, like the, you know, there was originally the spring of Gihon, like, and they've dug and they've actually found ruins of like the original spring around here where they probably, and like where Melchizedek's temple probably was up here. But anyway, the city of David, see this outline here? Like all this is like a hill. Um, and like it wasn't even it wasn't walled at first but it was a village that was just up here on this little jutting out area right here actually wait wait a minute am i wrong no it's right here this 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 map is weird i don't like this map at all you know, it's interesting about uh capernaum uh, Jesus's strategy of going there was that it was uh, the metropolis, metropolis. I'm sorry, of Galilee, and one of the most prosperous and crowded districts in all Palestine. And he did many miracles there, um, cast out demons. So he come in authority and power there. And it caused Christ's fame to be spread throughout the entire region. A little bit of the strategy of the Lord. I 
what did he say? Woe to you. Uh, uh, woe to you, Corazine. Mm -hmm. I know if uh, there's a there's a channel called Sergio and Rhoda. They they live in Israel and they they actually were and they're Christians and they would drive around to all these places and like a lot of the like Corazima is not like they don't they don't really know specifically where it is. Well, I actually I might be wrong about that because actually here's some ruins, <laughs> but some of these places is what do you? I think it's the other place. It's Corzini and Bethsaida, right? Bethsaida? Yeah. For if the mighty deeds done in your midst had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would long ago have repented in sackcloth and ashes. So look how it's just kind of this little village over here. Yeah. Compared to over here by the water. Capernaum right here. Mm -hmm. The metropolis of Galilee. Yeah, I think it's where the Roman forum and stuff was. I think it was just basically a right Roman town. Is God being merciful, not coming to us in power and authority like he did in those ways? You know, a lot of people are seeking that. Bus hmm. stop? That is a, that's something to consider. All right, it's just a bus stop now. That's hmm. safe. <laughs> bus stop. They got one stoplight. Sounds like the town I grew up in. We got two stoplights. Is God merciful? What? Wedding? What, what do you mean? Well, I'm just considering because there's sometimes. When I read scripture, I see where God's being merciful in, in the way that we we are unknowledgeable or are unable in certain things. And he provides the needs, you know. Um, the poor in spirit, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I, I take a whole different meaning from that, from what some people would, would take. Uh, including, I believe strongly, it's talking about humble. Uh, but even in humble circumstances and humble, you know, it could be that our inabilities are, um, uh, our lack of knowledge, God could find, uh, a place for mercy in, in a said given situation. So when Jesus was saying, woe unto you and, and Chorazin and, and Bethsaida, if these works that would have been done, if these works that I've done in t for you. Would have been done in Titan and in, in, uh, Tyre and Sidon, they would have been repenting. Um, you see the expectation that he has? Too much is given, much is required type of perception. Well, like I, like I always uh, try to keep in mind. Well, to whom less is given, there's less stripes, right? That's what that, that verse finishes. To whom much is given, much is required. To whom less is given, there's less stripes. So there is mercy because of ignorance. Doesn't mean there isn't still a need for any correction or to be coming in the truth, but there is mercy. Well, you have to keep in mind that God obviously knew what was going to happen in all cases. Yeah. And because we know he's a loving God, We know that he has always provided and he's always wanted to provide desires to provide. Well, even considering that, 
I still would love to be a part of being there when Jesus was walking the earth, you know, and doing all these things. I just, you know, I can't imagine any Christian that wouldn't want to, I don't think. Well, it would certainly make things a lot simpler, wouldn't it? Yeah. Can you imagine having a story telling people about how Christ came to your house and he said, Sean, I'm going to come eat with you today. And, uh, yeah, you've got that in your repertoire. Well, they say you could, uh, you could be serving angels and not knowing it. Entertaining angels, yeah. Do you believe that's talking about actual angels or living saints? Uh, well, I think Paul's making a point as far as because of the fact that even we're going to be judging angels in that sense that we better just be treating everybody with respect. <laughs> well, I've seen Paul use the reference to angels to saints um, or to believers. And that's why I'm, I don't know how to take that. I think he was saying you could be potentially eating with someone that is, uh, you're going to become a believer, even though they might not be that at that time. But I could be very wrong on that. I was giving myself a, a little geography lesson here. I, I'm just I'm, I'm trying to just remember names that I remember from scripture because I, I I'm not quite sharp on Holy Land geography, like where stuff is. Like I had no idea Bethlehem was this close to Jerusalem. Oh, little town of Bethlehem. And then Nazareth is up here. Yeah, where's Nazareth at? Where's the trailers at? Where's the oh, hood? There. Show me where the hood's at. Where the <laughs> hood at? How could anything good come from Nazareth? What's the actual? So down here we got the Dead Sea. Yeah. Yeah. Jordan between it. Nice little barrier boundary line. Um, and the Ammonites, if you remember, you know the name of the Ammonites, right? Yep. The capital of Jordan is Ammon. It's, it's, Paul, did you know that Paul took the vow of the Nazarite? And he was he claims he's from the tribe of Benjamin, so this would be the tribe that the Messiah would come from in order to reestablish you know the kingdom of God and his twelve tribes. Ten who left when the tribe of Judah anointed a king. That's interesting. I did not know that Paul did that. You didn't know that? Nope. That's in scripture. I know. I don't know everything. Oh. <laughs> but I know where to tell them where it's at, you know. It's in scripture. You, uh... Where's the original 
tire. I'm kind of rusty here. But the original tire was... You know do you know what, what the do you know what the vowel of the Nazarene was or the Nazarite? A can of worms on this, but I was going to get into this prophecy about Tyre. When the vowel of the Nazarite, where they commit themselves to uh, servitude to God, and it, it, was it a lifelong vow or? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. You you um um. Or time period, or yeah, it, would, it was it was time period. It would have been a time period, although I mean, it, we don't have a lot of examples from it. Right. Uh, however, I mean, I'm sure somebody, I'm sure there are lots of Talmudic stuff about it. Mm. Um, but again, the Talmud, I mean, when it comes down to it, you know, I mean, you could. When, when what they're going off of, what are they going off of? The same stuff that they create that we are. <laughs> what's made known to them? Yeah. Wait, no, what's in scripture, right? Yeah, what they have available. Uh, there's a lot of Talmudic stuff that's just anti scripture, as far as a Christian should ever be concerned, right? Mm. But the original uh, kingdom of Tyre was um, was an island, and uh, you know nobody can really mess with them, right? You remember the? Do you know about the prophecies about the kingdom of Tyre? Mm. No. I'm not saying I've never been told it. I just don't recall it. Oh, you know what? I don't like Bible Gateway. You know what? The burden of Tyre. So this is Isaiah 23. Ships of Tarshish. Ships of ship, 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 Tarshish. Um. So yeah, yeah, it was a you know great Mediterranean shipping nation run by you know Phoenician type people, inhabitants of the Isle, him, you merchants of Sidon. You see where that is, you know. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, that was Shane reporting it because the whole kingdom, right? Um, Is this your joyous city whose antiquities of ancient days her own feet shall carry her? Uh, I don't precisely know where I'm looking for, but I know what I'm looking for. And it shall come to pass that the Tyre shall be forgotten 70 years according to the days of one king. After the end of seven years shall Tyre sing as an harlot. Take a harp, go by the city. The harlot has been forgotten. Make sweet melody. <laughs> sing many songs that thou mayest be remembered. And it shall come to pass that after the end of seven years that the Lord will visit Tyre and shall turn to her hire and shall commit fornication with all the kingdoms of the world in the face of her. Her merchandise and her hire shall be the holiness of the Lord. It shall not treasure up and laid up for her merchandise shall be for them that dwell before the Lord to eat sufficient. Where? Oh. Basically, um, Alexander the Great um, built a like a a bridge to the city, basically to wipe them out because they uh, you know they insulted him or whatever. Mm. 
and what's left of it, it somewhere, maybe it's not here. Let me, let me look this up. It says basically there's nothing but like like fishermen, you know, like just like drying their nets on your rocks. Like that's all that's going to be left of your city. And it's literally what it is. Like it's literally what's there. Um, nets. Ezekiel. Ezekiel 26. Oh, man. So I had an entirely wrong prophet, man. I'm such a jerk bag. Ezekiel. Yeah. 26. Son of man, because Tyre said against Jerusalem, aha, she is broken. That was the gates of the people. She is turned unto me. I shall be replenished. Now she is laid waste. Therefore, saith the Lord, I am against thee, cause many nations to come up against thee, as the sea causeth his waves to come up. And obviously, Tyre would know about that because we can see it's right on the water. You know, it's interesting, though, what you said in Isaiah earlier, too, that it would be known as a place that would draw all those type people that the Lord set his face against. So that's very interesting. The strategy of God. That's what it says, too, as far as like any other one that's. Where, where, where was it? Uh, I know somebody's going to want to lash me for saying strategy. <clears throat> well, she is a mart of nations. She is the harvest of the river is her revenue, and she is a mart of nations by great waters. Excuse. Yeah, but it was interesting, Isaiah, how it made it sound like the city is going to become the same where the traffickers are honorable, uh, the princes are merchants, and then this place is going to be like a draw to all like people, you know, and then there's going to be judgment. Destroy the walls, break her down her towers, also scrape her dust from her and make her like the top of make her like the top of a rock. <laughs> mm. How's the place to come? It shall be a place for the spreading of nets in the midst of the sea. For I have spoken it. Yeah. He said it. It will be. There you go. There's your ruins. Mm. Place for nets on the sea. You can see these. Probably see fish. There's fishermen right there. Mm. Drying their nets. There's their boats. Yep. It's the fishing spot now. It's the honey hole. <laughs> the honey hole for the fishing spot. So I wonder where the actual, like I could look it up on here. I wonder if that was it. Cause I mean, I'm sure a lot of this stuff was like dredged out over the years. Mm. I'll look at that. Well, there you go. Scraped off like a top of a rock. <laughs> Cause this ain't the, that's the original city. You know, the, the actual tire, which is over here is the, the real, you know, the, but the, the, the real one is over here. So I assume the ocean just took over the land, right? Uh, well, I assume this is pretty old. See that? That's all excavated ruins. Hmm. Oh, that looks like cemeteries, though. Yeah, I think that's actually cemeteries. It's, that might not be ruins. All right, let me actually... Doesn't that shape of all that, have you looked at the whole shape of that? Doesn't that kind of look like some kind of... Ruins of Tyre. So this this one little tiny thing might be just the, this, the original village itself. Egyptian port. Yeah, it looks like all this stuff was probably underwater at one point. 
zoom out from that hole. All over the place. I have no idea, actually. I've never studied the uh, the specifics of the archaeology of this place. It looks fascinating. Yeah. I mean, I, I would I would imagine most of this stuff has been dredged out, but I don't know. Algae. Well, no, from what I understand, the because it originally wasn't attached to land. I look at that. That's clearly a Roman circus. Mm -hmm. When it was a Roman, I mean, but during the time about before Alexander the Great, before the Romans, and apparently he built a ramp connecting it in order to to to, to, to conquer them. So this land connection at some point was built by Alexander the Great. Although I'm sure he didn't build that entire swath of land. <laughs> right. Crusaders Cathedral. Looks like some kind of demon head or something when you zoom out of it. Well. So yeah, you even own where were you just at? Uh, tire, right here. See that little jutting out? Yeah, go go to tire and like, like zoom out just a little bit from it once you go into it. Like how you were on the close up of it just a minute ago. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Uh, yes. You see what I'm talking about? No. Okay, never mind. That's why that Roman hippodrome is right there, right smack in the middle of that. Like if you go over there where that blue dot's at, right, and you zoom out. I wish there was a Colosseum or something. There. And I know this is just an overhead of the map, but it kind of looks like it's the shape of a like a some kind of beast or something, or maybe a. Look at these. This is a Roman street, like Roman ruins, huh. all dug out. Cool. You don't see that? Looks like it looks like a fang coming down and kind of a head to a. Looks like he's got a neck. Is that the chin right there? Yeah. And the crown? You got a crown? Yeah, in the fang. Well, no, that's a that's the uh, the top the front of the, the 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 helmet. Oh, okay. No, that's called paradalia. Paradalia. Strange. Strange. Yeah, so it seems like um, I mean, Damascus is the oldest city in the world. Look at, look at all that cityness. The road to Damascus. Occupied city. Which one do you think is the, the road called straight? <laughs> hmm. Where do you think that was? That looks pretty straight. Right here, right yeah, here. That, that's straight. Yeah. Actually, that's where Ezra Paul. Is. That's where you're right there. And desert. Wow. And then farther, farther, farther north. Did you know that Antioch? was basically like the cradle of Christianity, of early Christianity. It wasn't Jerusalem. Really? Well, I mean, it was. All right, well, all right, yeah, let me take that back. No, it's good. Saying, you're saying really, yeah, you're right. 
he slapped my slap me for saying no. It, yeah, obviously it was Jerusalem. But um when it came to you know after after some time um Antioch became where it was at for For the, for the central Christianity. I mean, it was a metropolis. It was the one of the larger cities. I mean, think about it when it comes to, like, it being the gateway of the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. You know? It became the center hub. Yeah, exactly. And it's interesting with Ignatius, because... Yeah, you know, saying before he, he he seems to imply their whole church got wiped out in one oh seven. Um, one of the, I think Trajan would have been the emperor at this time. Still, no, I can't remember. I should remember because I just looked at this. But in either case, we know that there were. Like there were the larger persecutions, but there were also like sub persecutions like in, in local areas too. But there's yep. one point where basically Ignatius seems to imply like I, I'm the last one of us. He's like I'm not worthy to be called the last one. He's like, but that's and that's what the Lord has basically saw fit. So it seems like the Romans uh, basically came in and, and just wiped out their whole church, either executed them all or forced them all. Cause he's like, yeah, he has a couple people that he said came with him from Antioch. However, you know, I keep forgetting he's, he's in custody at that very moment. So whatever the room wiped out his church, he's with Romans. <laughs> yeah. Antioch was the second Rome, right? The, uh, and you're right in saying that it's a cradle of Christianity. You're not wrong in saying that. Um, from what I read on this, if I'm right, I should look it up to be sure. I don't trust my memory. Um, yeah, Antioch. Uh, there's a lot of earthquakes and military conquests that was reduced to a backwater okay. over over time. Yeah, it's like the Lord was like shaking him up to be like time to spread. You, you know, you gotta you gotta fly the coop. Yeah, I, I've been through that shaking myself before. Amen. Yeah, that's a good point, man. I'm going to go refill my coffee and I have to use the restroom. Um, okay. So these guys are stuck with me. You can talk about something I want to put on. Can, can you, uh, can you keep some verbalizing? Yeah. I, I'm going to talk a little bit more about Anya cause I'm on this page talking about it. So <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Let me try to mute myself. So well. Okay, let's see. Antioch. Uh, let me go back up to here. Yeah, Kelvy was right saying in the, it's the cradle of Christianity. Um, it's now called Antakya by the Turks with modern era buildings uh, completely obscuring those from Hellenistic and Roman times. Little is left of the glory that was once Antioch. Um, is founded near the end of the 4th century B.C. by Seleucus I. Nicator, one of the generals of Alexander the Great. The city's location benefited its military and economical, economically as well for centuries, situ, uh, situated along the Silk Road and the Royal Road. It was a hub for the spice trade and grew in importance to eventually rival Alexandria as the chief city of the Near East. Interesting. Very, very interesting. But there was, there was a, as far as Christianity, it was a great emergent, like an emergency of Christianity established there. Uh, they definitely had a, Successful mission trip there. 
Paul's in charge. And Kelvy better straighten up. You too, Yahoo. I find it very interesting, though, looking at these maps. Because I am... Uh, um, it almost sounds like New Age spiritualism, but I am a visual person. I, I do get a lot from... Probably a lot more than what I, I can read or listen to. And... Uh, it is interesting seeing all this. What you're reading about. Wonder how many of us would be willing to take those roads and knowing what you're facing, the danger that they were facing back then. And uh, I even see Paul refer to that they were fools for Christ. Uh, he's talking about his mission trips to in Asia. Uh, Who? They went through something. He didn't go into details, but whatever it was, he was at his wits end from whatever they put him through. What is that? I want to find that. We get here on the internet and we have discussions and um, sometimes it's hard to stay in, con you know, just a, in a conversation with people. And they were risking their life. Second Corinthians one. Let's see. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, under the church of God, which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are in all Achaia. Grace be to you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, the God of all comfort, who, comfort us, who comforted us in all our troubles and tribulations, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. I want to say this to the brothers, when you're going through something, look at it as if God's with you, and he will comfort you through this. And then we share that with others. We comfort them in those same ways. We, we share that with people. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, whether, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer, or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as you are partakers of the suffering, so shall you be also of the consolation. That's good to know. If there is suffering, know that you're going to be uh, part of the consolation also. Uh, for we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. You also, helping together by prayer for us, for that the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf.
Let's see. He's talking about Paul's troubles in Asia. And we're talking about our troubles on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> You think Paul would want to sit and listen to that? I don't know. I think he would be sympathetic for a minute. <laughs> hey, yeah, it's a whole new kind of warfare nowadays, isn't it? But still, you know. Well, Paul's area, you know, I mean, as a Roman citizen, I'm sure he would have seen it. But then again, the Jewish people, I mean, even back then, Sure, certainly kept seem to keep themselves uh, set apart, mm -hmm. you know, sanctified, as it were. Wish I can make that font bigger on that thing. Pretty sure I can. A little bit of Tarsus there. So, well, I'm just wondering when he come to Asia. Do you know exactly where he was at in Asia, or uh, what? Who Paul? Yeah. Well, I mean, he was pretty sure Tarsus is part of Asia, technically. Well, that's where he was from, right? Paul of Tarsus. Yeah. Okay. So that's Turkey today. I mean, back in right. the day, it was called Asia Minor. Um, right. So we're just Asia. Which I think is just kind of like East land, you know. Well, well, do you think it's connected to Jesus said how a prophet's not honored in his own town type thing? Or do you think it's... Well, it's got to it's get gotta get those gentiles right yeah but if you notice so well so i mean you didn't see it so in the uh the ignatius letters when he's writing to like philadelphia he's, he's always writing like oh philadelphia in asia um or or smear like per, like because there's uh, there's the people didn't talk a lot back then so they you know, they, 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 they foolishly copied the names of all their villages. It's like, hey, then you didn't tell me you named your village this too, you know? So now, now it's like, like, you know, like Magnesia. This was called Magnesia on the Menander because it was on this river, which, what's the river now? Looks like, yeah, it's this little river right here. Um, but apparently, like this, this little rural area back here is enough to have a whole church. Wow! Well, I think you know, because if you look at this valley, I mean, you have this kind of look at these mountain valleys, these these hill valleys. Like, so Turkey is an interesting place, I man. Turkey is kind of beautiful. Mm. Um, you know, you have these traveling along these churches. There's Laodicea, Colossae, the Colossians. Pretty sure. Is that, is that where policy is? Is that a different policy? Let me, let me look that up. Colossians. Is it, I don't remember it being that far. Oops. Colossian. Colossi. It is total ruins now. Nearby China. Located in Phrygia. Yeah, it's totally in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because I looked this up. Yeah, that's why I put it there. I'm no, sh I'm no slouch. So yeah, the whole town of college. It's not even. See that mound right there? There's your colossi right there. Oh, oh. that's what's left of it. <laughs> Bye, Colossians. Sorry. Oh. Sorry, I don't know why. I'm I, wonder how, I wonder how many people talking. were involved in. You know, I never really had anybody reference that. Maybe it's because it's not known. Um, I didn't drive by there. There was an ancient village. 
I wonder how many people like were in these churches, like in, in such places like this. Probably I mean, not a lot. I mean, it, well, I, I mean, do you think there was people in that area that didn't belong to the church? Well, for you, yeah, definitely. Oh yeah. Although you were probably you were probably lucky if I mean that's the thing you you have local authorities, um, you know. Because it's kind of, it, it kind of reminds like the dichotomy of the locals, especially around Greece and in, in, in Asia Minor. I mean, Asia Minor has been like part of Rome since you know for like two hundred years at this point. Like just like it, it's always been a part of Roman history. It's more just like anybody can remember. So it's not like eight Romans were considered like like all these dark, but it was a whole different thing. Like, but Rome was part of the culture there, but it's like, uh, my impression is between like, like these, these little local areas, especially in the mountains up here mm -hmm. or the Valley. I, I really, I don't know what I'm talking about, but this is just me just from what I've gathered. Um, it's, it's sort of like the economy of like, like people in like West Virginia, when it comes to like the federal government, you know, where people mm -hmm. in like, like, Oh, you're from the bank. <laughs> my dad said, I was supposed to shoot anybody who comes from the bank. <laughs> yeah the appalachians like this kind of like just off off in the reservation however that's not what i was what was i saying before about christianity being a very urban religion so i mean that being said as far as it being a, far away from from the greater like the bigger um metropolis like the, like just it, it's i think it's just a matter of where they could get to so right. it, it's trade routes you know, and if you look at where Paul went to, I mean, he's just he's going where where the people are. You know, I have an interesting question, maybe, maybe. Fitting but, but, well, in, is, though, real quick, when, when you get to these these places that back then, you're not you're less worried about the Romans and you're more worried, worried about the locals was my point. And that, right. especially if, if you're, you're trying to to to, to, to be making friends and the only people, you know, are the Jews. Oh, hey, I'm, I'm visiting. I'm a Jew. And all of a sudden, you start preaching this strange doctrine. Now you better make sure you got it somewhere else to stay. <laughs> you know? Right. Because the authorities probably ain't going to bother protecting you either. Or all that. Well, I mean, they did. I mean, we, we, we have all that. I mean, that's the thing. That's what's so awesome about the book of Acts. I love the book of Acts. Derby. Here's these little, because see these little like places where Paul traveled, Iconium. Lystra, Derby, it's just these kind of little like, oh, let's just travel here. Let's travel over there. Like, I don't know, man. I, I love this stuff. <laughs> I wish I was more familiar specifically. Uh, well, I mean, we have an axe, but like the, the, the different scholarship on these specific locations, because you know that there's, there's scholarship on uh, every bit of this stuff. As far as like, I, I can't, I can barely remember what was Lystra where they, you know, we're worshiped as Zeus and Hermes. Yeah. Well, what I was thinking about, like, imagine a congregation of people that are converted to Christ, but they all come from different regions uh, in, in the world. And they, they come from different backgrounds and, and all this. And they're ministering to such people, you know, that are around them and their culture and, and, you know, what they deal with. And us coming together and having this understanding, you know, of the cultural differences and i'm not talking about like going into paganism or any kind of corrupt manner but you know what i'm saying just the accents to how they how they speak how their mannerisms are you know uh how they express themselves you know all these kind of things that are really different among cultures um i imagine it would be interesting to experience that and uh it maybe it'd be a good way to get rid of legalism In Christianity, but yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Well, that's supposed to I mean it, it seemed like that was the original sort of. I mean, again, like when you're talking about why, why a lot of this stuff happened the way it did. The the God got this is the you know getting it out to the Gentiles. 
God is the is he the God of the Jews only? Oh yeah, he he's also the Gentiles. So it it's wild, and then you know, Paul, and so that's why it makes sense as far as like like I was saying about Antioch, but also as far as. I mean, I never really thought about it because just think about it as just general place names. But because the first one of the first videos I did on Christ, with, with the Christian video was um, uh, Theophilus of Antioch, uh, who I believe is the. See, see I, I really am, I'm no good with numbers. So they go, it's the second bishop of Antioch. Um, now I'm going to look up bishops of Antioch. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, but yeah, the Ignatius in himself was a bishop of Antioch. But by the time he's he's being transported by the Romans, there is no bishop of Antioch. And he's, he's writing to the other churches like, you got to send somebody there. Because um, right now, God's the only bishop. <laughs> right. And I would imagine it's like, like, wow, like what a disaster, you know, that would be. Although I'm not sure at what point specifically Christian. I mean, I know you say, you know, it, by, by the time of, uh, you know, I guess the 60s or 70s. Um, so 100 or, or well, no, what, a couple decades before Ignatius. Um, Evodius. Know that name? List of patriarchs of Antioch. Peter is the first bishop of Antioch. Apparently, did I know that? Hmm. Or is this? I thought he's the. Is this guy considered Christian bishop Saint Evodius, bishop of Antioch? When Peter left for Rome, oh, okay. So I was gonna say, like, was it? And this guy, Evodius, was succeeded. Because that's the thing; these guys, they existed. Now, none, none, none of these, because of the the big rift with Catholicism and Protestantism and whatever, whatever, all the baggage, like all this stuff is, like, no, nobody cares about this stuff. You know? Like, whoever. These guys probably weren't even real. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, I think they, I think they were. I'm sure, there's a guy named Evodius, you know, and, and Ignatius. Like you'll say, oh, Ignatius, all the letters are all fake. That's like, well, if you want to think that, then you might as well just think everything's fake. <laughs> and you are you are right in remembering Peter is the first bishop of Antioch. Well, I'm, I'm just looking at this list. You're right, though. It's from AD 49 till AD 54 during the Jewish expulsion from Rome. St. Peter reigned temporarily in Antioch. This is why right. Peter's yeah. This is why Peter's known as the first bishop of Antioch. It was the first Babylonian captivity of the Pope. What? That's a, that's an interesting thought. Uh, it sounds like I know who's where it's coming from. What Catholics? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing: the, if the Romans called their their local bishop their papa or whatever, You're right? Pope. I mean, sure. I mean that's their business, but but it's interesting because there's a point where Paul says. So that's a reference to Holy Father, right? Well, no. You know, Paul says the. You know, the brethren in Babylon greet you. Something like that. Does he say that? Or, I mean, Peter say that. Say that again? He said what? Peter says, like, the brethren in, in, in here, here in Babylon um, greet you. And, everybody, and, you know, there's there's discussion over what he means by that. Um, you know, whether he, some people say he literally was in Babylon when he wrote that. Hmm. 
So it says that they um, that Peter. Yeah, I don't know if the travel that comment is, but but Peter um, was a bishop. He left Antioch and became bishop of Rome, and then Evodius took over for him. I went to Evodius. Well, it could be that they're making ref reference to the Babylonian captivity. Um. It's like a Babylon a Babylonian exile is a name generally given to the deportation and exile of the Jews of the ancient kingdom of Judah to Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar the second. I know how they carry on Wait, say, say that again, I'm sorry. Well, I'm saying in the reference to Babylon, could he be talking about them coming, you know, the captivity, the Babylonian captivity? No. No? Well, there were Jews in battle. I mean, but what do you mean, like? The exile of that. I mean, I'm not sure what you mean. But, I mean, because I was thinking it was meaning, again, like, if, you, if you're telling me you're reading, I don't know, what, I'm not sure what you're reading. But if you're reading something that, that's equating the the Jews' expulsion from Rome uh -huh. as as, a, as another version of the the uh, expulsion of the the Jews from Israel and captivity in the Babylon, right? Then Peter writing his letter where he says, "Oh, the brethren from Babylon greet you," makes makes would make sense, you know, if that's the case. I mean. Right, and that is the case. But where you said where where if if that's how they saw it, I've never heard of that before. But if, if that's a chance that they saw it in that way, where like oh we're we're now in captivity again. Well, I read two different comments on this, and one coming from definitely from a Catholic, and then the other, not, and it made reference, you know, to the old captivity, you know, in the Old Testament, and. And then also they they're the Catholic writer is the one that's making like it's with that, you know, with that an understanding. Um so I don't know if you can trust that, just so see, so, you know. I don't know if I would trust that. She who is in Babylon. So here's a quote from the and yeah, I just saw it's uh keep having a prayer for his uh yeah, Lord, help him on that debate to try to open people's eyes. During the Jewish expulsion from Rome. That's when St. Peter stepped in. What are you reading? Is, is Wikipedia? When, 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 he, when he was made uh, TaylorMarshall.com, St. Peter in Rome of Antioch. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not saying it's all like, uh, I'm not necessarily think it's all much of made up stuff. So, yeah. But, um, what, well, so, uh, the Roman historians say that that expulsion happened at the instigation of somebody named, uh, Crestus. What do you think of that? <laughs> hmm. Now, the, the expulsion, because this is how they date. Because that happened in the Book of Acts. It, it, Book of Acts refers to that that event, right? And it's well known that that it happened. And the Emperor Claudius, um, and yeah, we have we have writings of other people at that time writing about it as well. So it's a you know it's all it was a well known thing. Can you imagine? I mean, what? <laughs> That's crazy, man. Hmm. Like I wouldn't that that would be hard to believe to hear that. Like, oh, they just expelled all the Jews from Rome. Like they've been living there for generations. Like, time to leave. Like they had an entire like section of the city. Like uh so that I know that there's there's some controversy over how the extent of it, but um yeah, and even then there's not a lot known about it. As far like that's the thing like there's scholarship and a lot of the scholarship it's it's a lot of people just 
pontificating, basically. Which is fine. We all like to pontificate. <laughs> mm. But yeah, so there's Ignatius number three. But yeah, so like all those churches, all those cities um, on the, you know, on the map. Um, had their own bishop. Just like Rome had a bishop. Well, you know, you know what happened with... Uh... Peter and Theophilus, I right? The Troas? Did, did Paul ever make it? I don't know if there's a church at Troas. Sorry, what were you saying? You know what happened right before this, uh, before he was put in that position in Antioch with uh, Theophilus and Peter? What, you, what? Now, I don't know how true this is. This is according to the Golden Legend. Uh, but supposedly Theophilus didn't want Peter there, right? And he was, let's see, he was the, I want to make sure I get the right. He was the governor of the city and he didn't want him there. And he, he asked Peter, why are you corrupting my people? Peter tried to convert. Theophilus, who immediately had Peter imprisoned. Uh, St. Paul heard about Peter's imprisonment and visited Theophilus in order to gain his trust. While there, St. Paul was able to visit Peter and then urged Theophilus to release him. Theophilus refused, but was curious about St. Paul's claims that Peter could raise the dead. He said that if Peter could raise his son, that he would release him. Miraculously, the governor's son was raised from the dead through Peter's intercession. And he was given freedom in Antioch to preach the gospel. And uh, Theophilus would later receive an account of Jesus' life through the hands of St. Luke. But anyway, then he went into Antioch. What do you think? Uh... What did you say the name of the source of that is? Uh, Golden Legend. Is that what it said? According to the Golden Legend. What's the date on that? Let me see. Because I don't think... I'm trying to remember. That's why I want to go back through... Because um... here's the thing. With Asubius... It's it's it, it's become my opinion that Asubius is is fairly credible, unless I'm going to choose well because he liked Constantine and therefore was a Catholic stooge. And therefore, I'm going to discount everything he says. Like, I mean, obviously, again, you, you know, because he himself acknowledges like things like we don't really know this, blah blah blah. blah. I mean, sure, sure, he's got bias, whatever. So if he mentions it. You know, I got to at least say, I, you know, he mentioned it. Because, like, it's so cool when you read one guy, like you read Ignatius, and then you read somebody 100 years later referring to the works of that guy. And then you read another guy 100 years after that referring to the works of that guy. You know, it's a it's a chain of custody, sort of. So that's why I would have to think of what that's from. Because there's, there's an awful lot of stuff that people just make up for various reasons. Hmm. Good I mean, point. it sounds credible because, you know, a story like that and all of a sudden he was like, oh, and then he held out his hands and, you know, seven well, birds fell out of the sky and then they, they all turned into a giant, uh, you know, rainbow or, you know, something crazy like that. Well, you know, signs had to follow those that, that were bringing the word and this was during that time. True. Uh, I don't I don't doubt it one bit that Peter could, you know, they said it when I, I, I don't know if there's a biblical reference to this. I believe there is. Uh, about Peter's shadow just being cast over people and people were being healed. Uh, there's no doubt that the Lord was working through him in gifts and signs and wonders um, and appointed that he would. You know, so it can, it's for me, it's credible in, in that aspect. 
that something like this could possibly happen. And then he would gain favor with those in Antioch, you know, because it said that it led to him, them giving him a seat above anyone else. You know, it was like a high chair is what they called it. And for Peter to sit and teach people. So I, I think it could be credible in, in believing that could be. I mean, because why else would he be put there? What's up, Amir? Good to see you. Yeah, I, I pinned a I pinned a link to my 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 YouTube channel. I don't know if you want to do that on yours. I don't because I. Yeah, I did. I've well, already done that. On yours, you have more people watching yours than you do mine. What? Well, at one point, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've pinned it on here. Amen, Kevin. I'm going to be praying for you on that, brother. I'll tell you another thing about the Ignatius thing. He says over and over again, Jesus is God. <laughs> he doesn't he doesn't hold back from saying it <coughs> over and over again. <laughs> he's like, Jesus, who is our God? Like, he's just... Because <laughs> a lot of them, it's like, you're... Like, when I was talking to CJ the other day, he was calling these guys, you know, proto-Trinitarians. And I really have to kind of grit my teeth on that. Because it's like, if you're saying that, I mean, it. I, 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 you know, suppose that, you know, you could say, well, I mean, he means Trinitarianism as a doctrine, uh, you know, like, as opposed to, you know, not that Trinitarian isn't true, but because, I mean, the CJ himself says he's not, I mean, he doesn't say he's not convinced of the Trinity, but he says that it seems to baffle him to a degree that just kind of, well, I mean, it, it, not that it isn't baffling. Like, don't get me wrong. I'll tell you what used to get to me, and I think if people are honest, they have to admit this, how in many references it, it's referred to the separation of Father God and the one Lord. Um, and I used to have a problem with that. I said, why doesn't it just put it all together? Or why doesn't it say that that's the one God? And uh, But it's showing the distinction between the persons of God, you know, and... If Trinitarian doctrine is true, there is definitely a distinction between the persons. Um, and, that, and that is baffling to put that all together in, in the concept of, of who we see as the fullness of God in, it, you know, in the, the triune doctrine. Um, so, so to say that there isn't something left there to try to understand, but I would think it's because you're trying to compare it to something that we know is of ourselves. And the way I get away from that is I automatically just think, we're talking about God here. You know what I mean? Uh, what is there to question? There's only to believe, you know? I don't know if I could ever fully explain who God is. I don't know anybody that could. I think if you think you can fully, you know, you might be. But we do have what we have in Scripture, and we do have that. Um, I think far from understanding everything about it, but most certainly believing it. It's the literal floating tarpian rock. <laughs> what do you think the purpose is for God demonstrating himself to us with a relation from a father to a son? Say that again. Sorry.
What do you think the significance is in God presenting himself to us, making himself known? For one, this is who he is, but making himself known also us seeing the relational aspect of God between the Father and the Son. Well, I mean, you, you just answered your own question. Kind of. Well, yeah, I know, but... Well, when it comes down to... Well, I mean, it depends on what angle you want to, to approach it from. If you're talking about... Isn't it all come down to what we can know of God? Relationally? I mean... Well, the, one, one of the reasons it can only be through Jesus Christ is because all things are literally made by Jesus Christ. Yes. Um, now, so somebody's going to come argue and say, well, all things are made by the Father. The Father made all things. He made all things through Jesus Christ. Because there are two persons... This is why persons needs to work. And again, which, and, and as we've said over and over again, you know, the idea of what person is not guys. But again, not to get off track. The father using well, the father creating all things through Christ, or Christ creating all things. When we're talking about person creating all things, uh, they yes, they they are both creating, just like they're both you know father and son. But it, when we're just talking about what's creating, it's God that's creating. Like. He created all things. Who did? You know, because if you were talking about they, them, it's kind of, it, it's irrelevant because. It really is. You're not keeping in mind, like, that's that's that different. That's, you know what, I should, we should probably just go over uh, the Boethius. Because um, it kind of struck me looking at the, the other. Oh, where did it go? The other father um or that whole giant list you know like uh, hello amir hey what's up man if that's oh. Oh, I don't see he, well he just left what you doing to me man where did the list go uh oh Oh, I gotta find it now. That's the list of patriarchs there. Hello, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, man? What's going on? Not much. How are you? Thankful. How are you? Uh, doing all right. I just found out. Let's see, two days ago, that I'm gonna be a granddaddy. For the first time, so oh I, really? So yeah, you guys are talking to a grandpa. Dude, that sounds exciting. So you got to be respectful now. I, I've earned the the title. <laughs> grandpa. Yeah, this guy's becoming a grandpa now. That goes for you too, Yahoo. Respect the elder. <laughs> Wait, let me ask you the what? What's more? Um, what's more exciting? Uh, being a grandpa or a father? Oh, man. That, that's what makes being a grandpa so exciting because you were a father first. I would hate to uh, distinguish between it. Yeah. It's, all, it's, yeah, it's, it's like weird. all in one. Yeah. It's just it's a like asking, yeah. yeah. It's like asking which child do you love more? <laughs> oh, yeah. And I, I tease with people all the time, like my, even my sisters. I always, when I talk to them, I always tell them, you know, you're my favorite, but I tell each of them that, you know. Yeah, I know. No. I tease my brother too. I'm like, you know, I'm the favorite child, <laughs> but you know, hopefully I don't, I don't think my parents have a favorite. Well, I, I want to tell you how much of a blessing this is because my daughter has two autoimmune diseases. She has lupus and she has POTS disease, which is a circulatory nervous uh, disorder um, 
and it's where you know autoimmune disease is where your, your body attacks itself um so it builds up antibodies like if you get sick and it attacks organs and different things and anyway there's a lot of things you know involved in it and everyone in my family has some form of autoimmune disease uh my son myself my wife i have one son that doesn't um but yeah the thing is is that this wasn't she had other issues and they just didn't think this was going to be possible and we've been praying and her and her husband's been praying and uh so yeah now it is possible and we're excited that's good. That's good to hear. So to me, it sounds like it's um, a genetic disease. Yes. Like it runs in the family. Um, but yeah, I'll be praying. Uh, everything goes well. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. I'll just I'll keep you in prayer, brother. I appreciate that. My pleasure, man. <laughs> it's the least I can do, honestly. Uh, you just, you guys have been so charitable with me. Uh, I, I could also ask for uh, prayers, mm. but I'm not sure if I want to. I think I'll just type it in chat. Okay, here you go. I'm kind of embarrassed to okay. expose myself like this, but no, 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 no. I'll pray. I'll pray for that. No, nah, you don't gotta Please. say anything, dude. Uh, yeah, I, God knows not... everything. The Holy Spirit is in is in me. Uh, you know, He's in Paul, as far as I'm aware. Uh, you know, I, I I pray He's in you. Uh, you know, so He knows, and like we've been saying about personhood, so. He's God, so obviously he knows. We don't, he, and because he knows, we don't got to say it. But we can pray. Right. We can pray. Regardless. Yeah, yeah, I understand. And listen, we are, um, we're all uh, we're all in agreement here that no matter what we're talking about, we can overcome <laughs> in the Lord. So, amen. Don't, amen. You know what? You know what? A lot of times, what it is, it's a fear that you have to overcome. Uh, and being willing to be accepted, you know, and uh, in, in his full, in the full salvation he offers, the full grace, the full mercy. Don't discount, don't discount it at, at any instance of, you know, trying to look at one thing above another, you know. Um, whatever it is that we're dealing with, man, we need prayer for, we need the Lord to, uh, we need to trust in the Lord to overcome and if you don't feel like you're accepted i think sometimes fear sets in and all kinds of things come with it and and rightfully so yeah. you should be believing that mm -hmm. put your confidence in him you know not um, in you. I'm still, yeah i'm still learning to do that man you got to practice like, it that's I'm all it is I'm yeah you to, just gotta... i'm trying to just like there you know you got to you got to practice it because this is what I believe that we, we was talking about relational earlier. I believe that my maturity comes with my relation being more mature too. You, you know, I mean, I think that is the maturity. And what I mean by maturity is, is that I've learned, I had to learn to let go of that fear and, and put full trust in him. No matter what I was dealing with. Right. And even while I'm failing, you know, that's very important to understand. If it's if it's not a clean break, know this that even while you're failing, keep trusting, keep practicing. Your consistency is faithfulness. Amen. amen. Well, I just pray that God keep, gives me the strength to get up. And just keep Thank going, no matter how hard my days are, you know. Right. It's just some days I don't even feel like getting up, and 
I have to ask the Lord for strength, and uh, usually He'll give it to me. Um, you know, it's just this spirit is tough. You know, with, with mental issues like OCD and all that. But yeah, <laughs> I'm not here to talk about me anyway. Uh, that's all I wanted to say. Just yeah, I'll be praying for. That's you. all I wanted to talk about. I, I think yeah, I'm gonna I was, try and. Uh, I was, uh, you know, I mean, well, you know, even if you were a serial killer, I would still try to tell you the gospel and try to teach you the gospel no matter what, right? Uh, <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, don't, have, that's don't, the thing, though. Do you guys, uh, doesn't it kind was, of like, doesn't sorry. it kind of shock you how, 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 how merciful and gracious God is that he, he, he'd be willing to save a, like someone that's as bad as a serial killer or a rapist. Uh, I just, I, I, it's hard to imagine. They, they can get saved, but, and, um, you know, most, yeah, of, you, mo they, most of the time they don't, but they can. And that's just, that just baffles my mind, you know? Yeah, but you got to understand this. Would, would God rather someone stay in a wicked state or would he rather them be saved? And, from what mm -hmm. I understand in ministry, man, the heart of God is that he wants all to come to repentance. And my understanding is it's the long suffering, the patience of the Lord. It's the goodness of God that brings you to that repentance. I think a lot of people have got this all wrong. They're still in the mentality of being under the judgment of the law. You got to understand you're not going to be judged for those sins. Your debt's been paid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let that be your motivation. Let it be the goodness of God that puts a willingness in your heart to desire him in that relationship. Really believe it relationally with God. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and let that rule in you. And that, then it will become priority to you. And these things that you've given priority to will no longer have that priority. Please pray for that, man, please. I, I have trouble putting God first sometimes. I'm thinking about all these other things that are completely you're like just you know they're right. irrelevant and uh I, I'm just you know, I'm thinking about uh worldly things all the time. Um you know, like what am I what how am I gonna do in the future? How old, Amir, how old are you? Oh I'm I'm twenty right now, yeah. Hey man, hold up, hold up, hold up. You're a young guy. Okay, take it one step at a time. And we were all young. We were all stupid, <laughs> you know, every one of us. I'm sure well, there might be exceptions. I don't know. Yahoo could have been perfect. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. oh, I don't know if he's going to get that one, but anyway. Uh, I think Yahoo's yeah, in my. Is there who, oh, some I of his think. teachings on the law, <clears throat> but anyway, um, reason we're, we're, we're both sugar stream into two different uh channels, so I think yeah. if you're wondering who that is, that's he's probably he's probably on the other channel. Oh, okay, so I'm looking channel. at one versus the I got what I'm looking at, I it's both, both of them mixed. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's on my channel, okay, I see. <laughs> Amir, well, look, look, son, you're 20 years old, right? There's so much that you have to learn. Learn to be patient with yourself because, listen, I, I believe this, that sometimes it, it's like a, a ball that starts small and it's rolling down a hill and it gets larger and larger and larger. That's kind of how our problems get with us, you know, and how do you stop it? You know, how, how do you? you know it's getting so much momentum how do i get to that point that i can stop this momentum well what you have to do is remove yourself rolling down the hill right and looking at the truth and what christ said and let the goodness of god you know rule in this believe him trust in him and build that relationship with him um, if you don't do it that way you're going to be trying to merit things with God by what you do and what you don't do 
and you're going to be in that mentality of being under the judgment of the law, and that's not what we're under. We're under grace. We don't use it as a blanket, yeah. to sin, but we do use it to love, and we got to understand that he loved us first, and he paid that debt. you got to believe that. You got to believe that Jesus mm -hmm. paid the debt, and when you received Him, man, uh, you're His, and no man's going to pluck you out of His hand. No problem, no sin, no trouble, no nothing. And put your confidence in that. You know, just believe mm -hmm. God. Yeah, and have faith that He's going to work on me. Yeah, until and, the day of redemption, as the Bible says. I, right? See, I believe when you're doing that, you're sowing into the Spirit, not in the flesh. You can sow into the flesh and and understand that when you do so, you're reaping the fruit of the flesh. So you're going to go into sin. You're going to go into hardness of heart. You're going to go into pride. You're going to go into, you know, uh, immorality, whatever it may be. But when you sow into the spirit in the way that God set it out, now you're doing what God said. You're, you're doing exactly how he set it out. That because of what Christ did, you can sow into the spirit even while you're overcoming sin. Right. And you just start thanking him, believing him, you know, putting your confidence in him and the spirit itself will produce fruit in you. And then it's up to you to walk in that fruit. Um, but when you're um, not in that, when you're not well, sowing to the spirit, you know, when you're not in that belief, when you're not in that confidence and then you're sowing into the flesh yeah. from the flesh reaps corruption. In flesh being man in yourself. Mm -hmm. Not the lustful desires of your flesh. I'm talking about that is the fruit of that. You know what I mean? Sowing yeah. into yourself, in your own doings, in your own works. That is not what God set out. Sow into what Christ did. It took me a long time to understand that. Because I needed the Holy Spirit to produce fruit. I can't produce it. Of course. And I had to sow uh -huh. into the Spirit, which is the truth of God's Spirit. Look at, look at it as being God with you. And He's in His truth. Right? He's not going to diverge from His truth. He wants you to be in that truth. That's what you operate through. That's how the just walk by faith. It, it wouldn't be faith if you knew what would happen. You know, you wouldn't have faith if you knew what the outcome be, would be, right? Right. You just concentrate on trusting in the Lord, brother. And you're a young man and you have a lot to learn, you know. Take it easy on yourself. Don't. You know, well, today we put, we put a little bit too much pressure on ourselves sometimes. Like how, uh, I mean, you're, as far as your general under you know your doctrinal understanding like and, and your trusting of the lord you know and and not just a lot of people say that very sort of uh nebulously as far as what that means and that sort of stuff but like do, do you firm as far as like you know obviously we can't understand god but when it comes to understanding that he's he's in control of all things um are you able to understand that without sort of because it and in a lot of these arguments I've seen lately with Calvinism and and it's it seems like when it comes to saying well if if you're gonna tell me he controls all things then he causes bad things therefore I have a problem thinking he controls all things therefore if he doesn't control all things then how can I truly trust him like you get all these different <clears throat> You know, <laughs> that can lead into other issues. Yeah. Um, as far I have as a hard like, time understanding that. Uh, yeah. Um, like, yeah, what, what, as far as like you, did you, would you say that you like firmly like believe like, 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 I, I don't think I've ever been an atheist, like in any form. Like, I think I've always at least thought there was something. I've never yeah, thought same, there was same. like 100%. Like, was, do, like, do you think that you, like, were you an atheist? Before? Like, I know you said you were raised, um, like, did you ever doubt that there was actually a God at all? I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not, I'm not including, like, you know, your random, random intrusive thoughts of just, like, oh, there's nothing, blah, blah, blah. 
Oh no, no. I, I think I've always. I'm pretty sure I've always believed in the creator. Um, although I'm not, I wasn't as like certain as I am now that there is a creator. Uh, but I did believe in God all my life. Amen. That's a good. That's a and, good start. <laughs> that's a very good start. Let me ask you this, Amir. Oh, yeah. Uh, let me ask you this, Amir. Um, it's always good to believe in God. There's never a bad time for that. Um, mm-hmm. <coughs> I, sh- I shouldn't have used the word sign. Let me just say it's good that, that that's how it was. Uh, uh, have you ever looked at God in the way uh, as you would a father? Uh-huh. Relationally, relationally in that aspect? You mean before I was a Christian? No, now. Oh, now? Um, yeah, of course. Okay. Then could you believe that your, believe. Your, your father, even though like he knew you had to learn certain things, and the only way you would learn them, he knew this, is by you taking your path and your road, and then him showing you that he's still there for you? Yeah, yeah. So could bad things come on you because of the bad things we do? Uh, yeah. yeah. Although sometimes certain. I take it, I take it as like if I do something, um, or let's say I I fall into sin and, and something bad happens, this is God's judgment on me. Yeah, Paul said, "Be sure your sins will find you out." And I believe what that means is that. Uh, continuing in that has its own consequence you know what i mean Mm -hmm. um but the lord the the father will still deliver you and you have to understand that i mean if you look at it in a relational sense your father doesn't never want to leave you in any kind of corruption he's holy right you know what i mean so whatever the means are like you say you used to have a hard time understanding that with you know, bad things happening, good things happening. Just look at it like a chastening, like a correction, like a for you training you up to give you understanding that his ultimate goal is that you come into that understanding. That, that's what a loving father does, right? Yeah. So how long how long have you been a Christian, brother? Uh, I've been around it my whole life. Um how long have I been a Christian? Let's see. I'm 53. Coming up on 53. Um, I've truly known the Lord for 13 years, but I've been around Him all my life. And okay, so for those 13 years, were were you were there moments where you were, uh, you know, kind of in my situation? Yes. Where you were kind of lost, and yes. you didn't you didn't know where to go. Yes, and I found my way to Christ. Um, and I had to put my trust in Him. I had to put my yeah. trust in. You know what I mean? I. It, it's so important. Not only do you come to Him, but when you come to Him, you put your trust in Him. You know, mm. um, with an expectancy that He is going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. And that expectancy is that you are willing to wait on the Lord because it doesn't, some people think like it's like snap magic Christianity, you know, like snap the finger, all thing, everything's fixed. No, I've I've learned this. When you learn your lessons, the the best lessons I learned took me the longest to get through. You know what I mean? Uh, Because there was so much involved in it. Yeah. It it takes me back to, you know, all the, Old Testament prophets, you know, Abraham, Moses, and all. Uh, I mean, Moses waited for 40 years. Like, <laughs> uh, that's not patience. I don't know what is. Like, it, it's funny that you mentioned that. It's funny you mentioned that, Amir, because when I was going through what you're going through, uh, very similar things or other things that I had to deal with. Um, mm-hmm. That's the that's where I got to in the Bible and, and read about, you know, it's like, that's what come to me was that, that whole understanding of how long it took Moses, 
you know, and those that will wait on the Lord, if you're waiting on the Lord is that you're, you're having confidence that, yeah, I'm failing right now. I ain't getting it right right now, but I still trust in the Lord. Amen. Because that's, yeah. that's believing, right? When we're failing, yeah, without faith. Without faith, we should, we should never let our failures keep us from believing. That would just be, right. I mean, what kind of belief do you have if you allow that, you know? And that's the thing, like, when we're in these moments of, like, suffering, that's when God is the most exalted. Like Paul said, when I am weak, therefore, uh, I, I am strong. Yeah. So, I just, it really hit me during these moments that, wow. that These are the moments where I'm more uh, de devout towards, in my in my faith, you know? Mm -hmm. um, these are the moments where I'm praying the most uh, now I understand because it's God's way of uh, because naturally our flesh can't our flesh whenever if it you know in its natural state it doesn't want God right um, right and so we must go through suffering in order to desire God uh which is why I believe that when we're in heaven and our glorified bodies, we're not going to ever sin again because uh, we know what that's like. You know, we know what you know. What, we know what it's like to be separated from God, and then we won't. I don't think we'll ever want to feel that again. But that's another topic. <laughs> I don't know why I brought that up. Because um, some people believe that you don't have free will in the in heaven. When we get to heaven, we don't have free will. But I don't think that's necessarily true. Um, I mean, why would God just remove our free will for no reason? But I don't think we're gonna need it. What? I don't think. I don't think. I, think we're, I don't think. I don't think we're will. gonna need. I don't think we're gonna need free will because I believe that if if we're in in a new body and it's not corrupt. You don't think our, we're going to need to make a choice? Our, our will is going to be the will of the Father as Christ is. I believe yeah. we're going to be like, like Christ. Yeah, but Paul, I mean, maybe, you're, maybe we're not thinking of will the same way, but if we're in eternity and I say, hey, do you want to go visit Peter or do you want to go visit Paul? So you think it's going, to be, it's going to be your will uh, to make that decision. Are we talking about a type of will that can get you kicked out of heaven? Will is will. Yes, yes, yeah. that's what I was well, talking about. Yeah, that's right. Like, I'm I don't at. think we're, I don't think we're, we're going to be able to sin, not because we can't, because like God removed our will, our free will, but because uh, we just don't want right. to. We're not, we, know, we know, we know what that's yeah, like. We know yeah. what life without God is like. Since and, and Amen. Um, we can't understand because you know I think sin. yeah I think we're gonna have some we're gonna have memories of. In that regard. Like, but, <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. I understand what it's like to hate sin, but when it comes to, you know, like I think is somewhere, somewhere where it's like, try not to curse, you know, your mouth is like, you know, like, like you, you're still going to be bound to it until you're glorified, you know, right. when it comes down to yeah, it. Paul, another Paul, thing. Said, Paul said in a twinkling of an eye, all things will become new. And I believe the brain that we have now that we use and all these things where we're going to actually understand who we are as a spirit. And when we're given that new body, I think it's going to be subjective to who we are in Christ at that point where all things are new. Um, and yeah. That's an interesting thought. Um, I don't know just, all what that he hey, I could never tell you what that details, you know, no, <laughs> but but it's going to be new. I wish, um, I wish the Bible would mention more of this these kinds of stuff. Well, when you Paul, what did you? Sorry, Paul. What what were you? What were you just saying? That was an interesting thought. I don't know if it's interesting. I, I just believe in a twinkling eye, and I everything's going to be changed. You know. Instantly. Oh, as far well, I mean, so you mean like for as far as a rapture? Is that what you're talking about, Amir? Yeah, I, I mean, we're not carrying the same brain with us. We're not carrying the same uh, 
well, we're carrying. Well, I mean, there's notions of how we're transformed when we're saved. You know, once we believe, because in my belief, um, and 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 Paul believes too. I mean, I'm not trying. I'm not. Um, I don't particularly remember. I don't want to assume your your beliefs, um, here. But you know, in my belief, you you you're justified and you're saved upon belief when you first believe. But it, it and you know, it's like, well, then what's true belief? Because I do believe there can be a false belief. Yes. Um, now, whatever true belief is. I, what I, I can't tell you what that is for anybody, but what it, what the Bible describes it as is when the Holy Spirit is indwelling you. Mm -hmm. um, and then when that happens, we are being sanctified. And this is that chain of redemption, I think it's called, you know, and then there's, you know, we're just first we're justified. Then we're being sanctified daily by the Holy Spirit, by walking in him. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and if we're not walking in him, you're not gonna, and you're not gonna lose your salvation. If you're truly saved, you're not gonna lose your salvation. Otherwise, you're never actually walking in Him. You can't be walking. You're not gonna walk in Him, and and suddenly, you're you never walked in Him before. Jesus says, "I never knew you," to people. Uh, I mean, I do think that that's uh, yeah, he unsaved be. people, and he's not lying. He never knew them. He didn't. He's like, oh, I mm. forgot you existed, or I've decided, uh, you know. Like, yeah, he doesn't say I, I knew you, and then I didn't know you, and then I knew you again. <laughs> yeah, he that started a good work in you will finish it, you know, until the day of his redemption. So, um, yeah, you can trust him. And listen, even if you lack in trust, he's still going to be faithful. To you know, he can't deny himself. Yeah, yeah you because he even that too. he healed people but, who didn't have faith. But I will tell you this, there's a much greater benefit when you come and coincide with what he asks you to do to trust him. There's a much course, better benefit because there's, you know, anything else brings mental anguish. And, yeah. and you, you, yeah. people, people underestimate mental anguish when they read that. I think sometimes uh, if you've lived through it and if we would recognize it, probably identify it properly, we all know what that is. And it ain't nothing to be played with. Right. See, look at that picture, Paul. Doesn't that look like, see, that's like an idea of like the heavens, you know, like like the circles of heavens. And this is from my Irenaeus video. Um, but Irenaeus says that the circles of heaven, and, and he says that the, remember I was saying about the seven uh, levels of heaven here? Right, seven spirits representing in a way so that you can sort of add it up in the spirits. Mm. And uh, let's see, see, there's the same shape because it's sort of like a layered thing. Oh, yeah, I, I'd never saw the menorah like that before, as far as from like the top down, as far as the bottom up. Okay, but that would be like the Lord coming down and mount and like you know, becoming one with creation through the spirits, you know, with the seven spirits, seven spirits being, you know, these, it's not different. It's not like it's different. Like the, the idea of what a spirit is in that regard is interesting. Anyway, I didn't want to, I didn't want to sidetrack you guys. No, 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 no. It's interesting. What, what shape do you think the earth is? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> joking. Be careful. Tread lightly. Oh, late yeah, <laughs> Warning. Warning. Flat earthers. I'm I, mean, I, I have to see people that believe the world's flat as like, I mean, as long as I am not decided that they're just trolling. Kelly don't think they're saved. <laughs> well, it's basically just like another false belief. Like you're a Calvinist. Oh, you're a Calvinist. It's like, do I want to argue... You know, or not? Like, it's like now Calvinism, I think, might be worse than flat Earth. So let me just say that. Well, yeah. no, I don't think at all. Uh, you know, and, uh, yeah, that's a fact. <laughs> what do you think is one of the most damnable heresies out there? Denying Jesus as the Son of God. I mean, how how oh, damned can you get? <laughs> I guess you can get yeah. pretty damned. Uh, yeah, every I've noticed this in every religion. The false religion and slash cult, they'll 
they would first they first deny the uh, Trinity, the or the deity of Christ, yeah. and then um, attack, yeah. the blood atonement of Christ. Most Gnosticism's built on that, from what I've seen anyway. On yeah, on just, yeah. attacking the deity, you know, the fullness of who God is. Right, and it's like, why is it so hard to believe? What? Why is it so hard to believe that Jesus is God and that God can become a human mm. and that he is a trinity? I don't know. Well, it's interesting to think how the Arians and other heretics and even Manichaeans, um, they called themselves Trinitarians. They said, we believe the same trinity as you do, Father, Son, and Spirit. Like, they said that. If you ever look, like, yeah, one but- of the videos, channel is a debate between augustine and a manichaean and he says exactly that he's like but if you look into there what they believe it's like that it's like that's that's so leaving a whole bunch of stuff out that that's like it's it's it you can see the dishonesty like even back then that people had when they were describing their views oh, we're just like you <laughs> i mean there's a re- there's, there's a reason there's a scripture that says i am that i am Think of, think of the reasoning why that needed to be said. People would limit God. You know what I mean? Um, right. I am that I am. Exodus 3.14. Amen. I am because God is not pretense you know he's he's who he, who, he's out, who, out of time god is abraham was i am yeah god <laughs> is who god is <laughs> yeah <laughs> and we don't define that god does so I, I see a lot of people trying to think that they're going real deep in knowledge of god trying to define god i've learned to just so, believe what you know believe them don't live. Oh yeah, no, a hundred percent. You that's how you get into you know heresies is when you try to you pr- project your human understanding and human knowledge onto this eternal God. Um, you know, if if he says he's one God in three persons, then just believe it, you know. Just because it doesn't make sense. And I've seen people that that left, you know, Christianity for this. You know, they've they've uh Either they become Unitarians or uh, become Muslims or something of the sort because they couldn't make sense of the Trinity and they thought that, you know, to them it didn't make sense how how it's not three gods. But that's the thing. Yeah. You know, God is outside of time, Usually space, that's because matter. of the, the bullheadedness this of, of people. Of people. Not because they're, I would say of Christians, just so happened the bullheadedness of Christian people. Because usually when people want to argue, they want to get down to the fine points, and then they want to assume that people aren't saying, like, are saying things they don't mean just for the sake of being able to wag their finger at them. Very, And then that's when you say people are walking away. And obviously, like I just said, I, I, I can't say that they truly were saved, but they, they were, you know, they... Uh, they, they, they were able to use that for an ex, if, you know for a reason to walk away then you know shame on those anybody that who they asked and, and was unable to give them an adequate answer uh, in love at least because I would think right. if they're really seeking just like you said they would accept it because again it's not something you need to accept uh, fully <laughs> as far as like, accepting it and understanding it Um you know, other than accepting Jesus, because uh, again, just going off of experience, like uh, as far as, because usually when when the arguments came in and trying to describe it, it's like usually a problem comes in because they would say, no, 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 he's fully God at all times. So to say he's not, and then you know, so where the contradiction is, where you start using like when you try to pin it down in like logical numbers and phallus and, and and basically bring it down to like well if he's three this then he can't be three that and and, and you can really use logic in a way because a logic can be used as a, as as a as a, and i'm not saying that god's illogical at all but but you can you can really skew things 
again, it's like saying, oh, uh, my, my my car is a tricycle. You know, it's like, oh, well, well, what do you mean? It has wheels. Well, it doesn't have wheels. Then you say, you tell me wheels have tricycles or, or, you know, tricycles have wheels. Yeah, there's a vehicle that has wheels. Therefore, it's a tricycle, like by some certain mm. logic. It's just really bad logic. You know? And so because that's true, Jesus is God. You know, that's kind of sometimes the logic. I, I well, my, my yeah. point is when, when people are just like, no, 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 you can't, you can't. Because people say, well, is it like this? No. Is it like this? No. Is it like this? No. And then it's like, well, then, then I'm leaving, you know? <laughs> I think the first thing that has to be understood is that God, Jesus said yeah, God I think is. It's okay to say it's like that, but it's not exactly like that. I think that's okay. <laughs> Just as long as it's understood to stay humble and say it's not exactly like that, but it's like that. As long as it doesn't contradict, you can leave a mystery. You can leave an under. But here's the thing, man. Because if you think the Trinity doesn't make sense, then I would, uh, I would like to help you make it make sense. <laughs> yeah. Because I think it makes sense. Um, because I, I've seen a lot of arguments that people have brought against it. Because they either don't understand it, you know, or they don't understand it, or you know, it doesn't make sense to them. And because of the questions they ask, it's clear why it doesn't make sense to them. Just like when somebody asks about flat Earth, and they say, "Well, then, how does when the space shuttle go up in the, in the space, how does it keep up with the Earth if the Earth's traveling through space, you know, at like you know thousands of miles an hour?" And just that question alone tells me so much about their misunderstanding of everything about space travel right so it's like where do i start so i'm not saying you're you're that and with the trinity but i'm just saying uh yeah. you know, if, if, like there are people like i've seen because I've, I've seen reputable scholars sit, like write books or write dissertations i guess about uh why the trinity what why the trinity being illogical is okay and i'm like no because my whole shtick is that it is <laughs> Making this look bad, man. Like yeah, William uh, and Craig, for example. Is, I'm like, no, dude. <laughs> did he, William and Craig, really? Um, he really uh, <laughs> screwed us over with with his um, analogy of uh, the Trinity is like a, a, a cat skeleton or something like along those lines. I don't know if you guys know about that. It, it's in his book. A cat. Um, Skeleton? Yeah, yeah. Well, skeleton of a cat. Trinity, I would argue, is like everything. Or rather, everything is like the Trinity. Every single thing. Name me anything, yeah. Yeah. and I will tell you how the, how it represents the Trinity. Now, here's the thing. I, obviously, you can... An egg? Like, well, you're just... I said, you know, you're just uh, obviously just skewing everything to slant towards your view. But my, my thing is... If you try to go outside of it, because my, you know, in my three, my view of the three uh, essential princi principles of existence, you know, I, I think are, are still irrefutable. As far as like e each of these three, what is represented in the three persons of the Trinity is a is a just a irref is a is a, a essential principles of the cosmos. Principles mean, and it's the thing, once you start getting into what words are and what words mean, because the way that that ancient Greek word, language meant, used words like hypostases or hypostases or whatever, like the, it was a different, like we don't have the same word for it. So it's like, well, well, God can be one theos and three hypostases and, you know, and we just say persons, you know, and it's like, because that's the closest mm. thing you can get to. And I've come and... In my early days of being a Christian, I wanted to argue against all that and be like, well, is it this? Is it really that? Is it really this? And the thing, like, uh, there's no need to reinvent the wheel. It's, they, it's, they, they, they did a great job. I'm really, maybe it's because I, when I got older, I stopped, like, just trying to just, I mean, well, no, I, I haven't. I haven't stopped uh, being, a, being <laughs> impetuous. But uh, as far as being like, like, not trusting, like, a lot of the older views. Like that, that they haven't figured it out. Like a lot of them did figure it out. Like, and I mean, like, like calling the person's person and not trying to be like, well, is he really a Trinity or is he a holy infinity? Isn't he infinite? Is God infinite or not? So then why are you just limiting him to three? Like I used to like think of those arguments, but I didn't, I didn't try to make them because again, since I already believe that Christ was my savior, 
those things were secondary to him believing he was my savior and that he was God. So I'd be like, well, the whole, how's the Holy Spirit God? Now that just kind of, it, I didn't have a problem with it because I was like, well, that's the ineffable, ineffable, or ineffable, what's the word, uh, quality of God that we can't know. Um, everything spirit like to me it just and you know it's like i thought we could have a spirit that's not us but it is us but there's all these different representations of us w within different dimensional frames so i didn't see how there could be some or that we are some shadow or echo of that higher truth of what the trinity is who is god or yeah who, who, yeah who god is is like you know jesus didn't leave with us without any information how to get to this conclusion. Um, he actually did give us the information. And he said that God is a spirit. He also said no one's seen the Father but the Son. Uh, when he talked about the spirit with Nicodemus, he said it's like the wind. You know, you don't know where it comes or where it goes, but you, you know it by what the wind does, right? Um or I don't want to say it, you know, the spirit by what the wind does, or, you know, that, you know, the wind. I mean, to, to be fair, tree. scripture does call the spirit <clears throat> sometimes, but it's because of how they're referring to the work of the Holy spirit, you know, like, like they're right. always, it's the whole thing's a metaphor because he doesn't speak for himself. Well, I find it interesting. You know, the Holy spirit is, is God with us and God is a spirit. Uh, we're spirit. I believe that wholeheartedly. We can't see it, but we know that we are that spirit because that's who we are. Um, we have life in us. You know, I don't believe that God blew blew oxygen up Adam's nose. I believe he gave him his spirit. He's a father of all spirits. It's a living being. Um, so I think sometimes, you know, we can, like like you said earlier, Amir, we can put these limits on God from our own understanding of who we are. You know, and first off, I think you got to start with that. You know, I am that I am. It's uh, omnipotent, omniscient. So there's the, uh, what I think, because I think the one Godfather of all is like its own statement. And who is, because Father of all in, in this context is, is a fact. I mean, God is the Father of all. Um, but in the Trinity sense, this is where I think the who, there's three who's here, and there's one what happening. The one what, one God and Father of all. He is that, that's what God is. He's the Father of all. Now, Father here is not being used in the same context as person in this particular regard by Paul. But I do think this is a Trinitarian statement here because he's like, who? And then here's three who's because you have who and who and who. Three who's, one what. Right. So that's one ontological being, the God, uh, one God and father of all, Yahweh. And then you have three underlying um, principles. And that's the hypostasis. Uh, and that's the, the who or, you know, you say who or persona. And that's the uh, and that's what he is above all, through all and in all. And that and that's basically him encompassing, excompassing. Uh, intercompassing, exocompass, every sort of encompassing all of creation because he is the almighty God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm just, I'm tired of being accused of worshiping three gods, man. Look, I am that I am. It's like God saying, I am the father. I am the son. I am the Holy Spirit. I am that I am. Wait, so well, that's poor God? No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, people argue as well. It's like well, how you say it. Now, if I wanted to argue with you, I would say, well, it's modalism because you're saying he's this and those three things. But the thing is, even if he's, you know, it, I mean, the, the, the simple thing is that he's all those things at once, at all times, together. The, the difference, yeah. the only difference is what, you know, what he's, is, is in his, his, his operation, which is constant. Like there's no mode of operation with God. He is like he doesn't need that sort of thing. Right. But again, each each separate person of the Trinity and like what their distinctiveness is is sort of within its own 
like even saying its own nature, I think is kind of off. I like guess where it's kind of, cause it's so easy to, to skew things, but, but that's where the difference in substance versus the difference in, in a relationship and real, and what, you know, the nature of relationship is versus the nature of what substance is because relationship doesn't involve substance in itself. And it just involves relationship between substances or it doesn't, a relationship doesn't revolve, it necessitate a relationship between multiple substances is, is what one of the arguments is that's going through. That's where me and Paul were actually, we're probably, we're thinking about going through Boethius where he goes in, goes into the Trinity, um, sort of summing up all of the views of the Trinity up until that time that I have conveniently on my channel and audio book for, for 1995. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Insert. No, it's just, well, actually, so, yeah, to plug my channel here. Plug the, it. If you look at my playlists, the historical playlist, uh, I'm going to play one. This, this, the, Paul, did you know I did the Theophania, which is like just a whole, it's a Subius oh. things. It, it's five books. No, I haven't went through all that. Oh. Each of them's five, two hours long. It's just, <laughs> it's just giving apologetics. You're so long winded. Here's the history of the martyrs in Palestine by Eusebius. Wait, um, Paul, did you see this one? With the, uh, <laughs> oh, Zeus. I uh, am not going to trouble you with requests for a fortune or a throne. You get prayers enough of that sort from other people. And from your habit of convenient deafness, I gather that you experience a difficulty in answering them. But there is one thing I should like, which would cost you no trouble to grant. Well, Siniscus, <laughs> I'm disappointed if your expectations are as reasonable as you say. Whom does he punish in particular? Wow. Order? Again, thing I'd rather not answer. Oh, <laughs> 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 Murderers, for instance. Yeah, that's me. The, the pitch right. changer. Yeah. So and this is a, a pagan guy with the hero. Uh, doing this, um, basically mocking predestination in a way. Mm. He's like saying, uh, like, oh, don't the fates control you? Well, then why do men pray to you? Why don't we sacrifice to that? Like, don't you sacrifice? He's like, he's like, we're actually more free than you are because we can do what we want. He's like, you're, you're you're a slave to the fates. He's like, you ain't even have power. And like, Zeus is like, shut up, be quiet. You're talking too much. <laughs> That's funny. So are these audiobooks just you uh, narrating? Yeah, I didn't do like production value on that. The other one I did like that was Augustine. Uh, the debate between and the domination of darkness. If therefore in both any here, there's one part where it gets really heated. But here it is inquired of you whether the soul truly it follows from the reason of things that there are two substances in this world which agree in forms and in names. Of which one belongs to corporeal the crowd getting angry the other is the eternal <laughs> substance of the omnipotent father which we believe to be god's substance augustine said those contrary things that move you so that we think adversely have happened on account of our sin that is on account of the sin of man for god made all things good and ordered them well but he did not make sin and our voluntary sin is the only thing that is called evil there is another Ooh. doing the desires of the councils of the flesh and were by nature he wouldn't have called us. the soul would have been alienated by the mouth of the apostle from god from this well that's what's funny about this because he's he's arguing for free will that free will exists mm -hmm. 
against the Manichaean. Yeah. Manichaeans believed in a dualistic thing. Without free will, how can you have judgment? That's just where I'm at on all that. I've come to that conclusion. Um, yeah. Or love. How can you have accountability? How can you have anything? You know, it's just ridiculous. And how can, yeah, how can God be, uh, you know, gracious if we don't have free will? Well, there's more than one type of free will, so I can't, I don't want to misrepresent them because they'll always go into that. But at the end of the day. I just, I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's another thing that I have a hard time comprehending. It's best just to run. Because, <clears throat> like, run God knows all well things, right? God knows past, present, future. Run from so, Calvinism. Yeah, run from still no reason why there's there's still no reason why like he I mean, he created people he created them with the ability to to have free roaming ability you know say he created a bunch of balls on a flat surface they had the ability to roll in one direction or another of their own accord somehow um, that's a mystery sure but that doesn't contradict. Him knowing which which way they're all going to roll, I I don't think contradict like that. And yeah. There's no contradiction yeah. there. No, of course. Um, now people can use that to say, well, this doesn't work because of this. But I think they're just they're they're conjuring up like a, a hypothetical universe that just doesn't exist. Hmm. Now they say, well, prove I it just, doesn't exist. Yeah. You know, it's like, well, <laughs> what do you think of um? I mean, there's this thing that's been on my mind a lot lately. Uh, one of the, what was it? Uh, from, it's from Tulip. Uh, Irresistible Grace, I think. Where the right. Holy Spirit must enter in you and lead you to Christ. Um, instead of you coming to Christ on your own. What do you think of that? It depends how you use that. Um, I know how they're using it, and this is what makes it tricky to me is that because they're, I believe that if the Holy Spirit's uh, here to convict the world, you know, it's God with us of sin because of unbelief, of righteousness because the Son goes back to the Father, and of judgment because of, uh, you know, the, the evil one deceives the whole world. Um, so we're being warned about the deception, right? We're being affirmed in the righteousness that the Lord went and set on the right hand of God. That means it's finished, nothing else to do. Uh, the gospel, I believe, is what is used. The preaching of the gospel through the Holy Spirit is convicting men of their unbelief. And I believe that's how that works, but you still have a choice. Now, they would say, that there's no way you can have that choice and actually believe without what the, what I've heard them say is regeneration. Not influencing yeah. the Holy Spirit through the gospel. It's, it's regeneration. And then you believe and then you're regenerated again for salvation. And I'm like, again for salvation? You know, it's just, it's, I don't know, it's just so weird. God, God told you to believe. He said, if you don't believe, you're going to be judged. So how does God pick through all of us that can't do it? Say, okay, I'm not going to pick that one. I'm going to pick this one. How's he going to judge us? According yeah. to that? How's he even going to judge us according to the accountability of that? And how is that justice? <laughs> yeah. God is just. He's, he's perfect in all his ways. You know Exactly. And they'll be say, just. Well, then they will tell you that you hate the sovereignty of God. No. Well, that's what they're going to tell you. I'm just, I'm just preparing you. Kelly, <laughs> go, go into Calvinist form and, and shoot at them a little bit. Let them know. Well, that's exactly there. Kelly, exactly Kelly the anti-Calvinist. You hate the sovereignty of God. You think God will not move unless you move first. <sighs> Yeah, well, I mean, the thing if you're talking about irresistible grace, that's that's the dichotomy. So I, I have an ancestor. Um, if you look at his Wikipedia, 
it basically says the reason why he became a universalist was because of his disillusionment with Calvinism. And he wrote stuff about it. And it's, if when I look to, I, I don't know if you've ever seen A's Theo is his name, um, who is a, a universalist. And he's, and he's got a following of universalists. And they are, they are just hardcore universalists. And their arguments are what do you think you you have you think your free will can you know your so-called free will to to, to, to thwart god's will you know yeah. like they have the exact yeah, same yeah. Argument. but the thing is if somebody has actually decided you know what this calvinism how does this make sense i can't deal with this not making sense if god if this is the way it is and it's a loving god then he would save everybody through irresistible grace mm. you know that's the thing if you're going to teach me irresistible grace and I'm going to I'm going to have to believe that everybody's saved. And that's the Calvinist will come to you with that. Well, if you don't believe in Calvinism, then you must be a universalist. Mm. And it's because, oh, well. OK, we can't explain to you how to create how God creates a, a being and how he knows and how he plans and all that. Like, then I have to follow your your stupid view. No, <laughs> <laughs> view, but, you know, be the Calvinist view. If you were to remove the word believe and let's say we put the word trust in there, right? Do you think God's going to make you trust him? Is he going to put you in a headlock and say, you better trust me? <laughs> right. Or is yeah. he going to offer you the good news? You know, he's offering, he's offering, he's offering good news. Yeah, he's offering good news. Yeah, That's God's not going over there. Yeah, God's not like I want to save these certain people, and these other people are going to go to hell. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> you, you've read John three before, right? Of course. And it says, "And this God's is the judgment." The world. Yeah, this is a judgment. Men love their evil deeds more than they, you know. It, yeah, rather, yeah, rather than the light, which was the good news of the gospel of Jesus. It's the glorious yeah. light. It said, it said, unless this glorious light shine unto you, you know, talking about the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If it shines in you, first your thing you understand, God did everything for us to be saved. We have to trust him. You know, and he, and he demonstrated it through his son. He, he uh, fulfilled it in his son. He prophesied it concerning his son, you know, and Jesus said it's finished. And now he sits on the right hand of God. That's how finished it is. There ain't no more to do. So, all right. So if irresistible grace was true, why isn't everyone saved? <laughs> yeah. If God is also loving, right? Well, then they'll say, God is merciful to whoever he's merciful to. Expression of our Lord. Sorry. <laughs> You're good, man. I like the thumbnail. Who are you to question God? Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, no, that's what they'll say to you. I'm just telling you, this is what they're going to say. Oh, and, well. and, and I don't question God. I said, but what about we live according to every word that proceeds from the mouth of God? And what about God keeps his promises. All his promises are yes and amen, right? You're saying God can come against what he set out in his word just because he's God and he can do whatever he wants. That, that God would. I ain't saying God can, that God would do that. You know, what's your, how are you looking at God? And that's the problem I have with Calvinism is how they perceive the character of God. Yeah, same. I used to be on the fence, but now I'm certain that it can't possibly be true. Yeah, I think once you, once the gaslighting is, I mean, once you stop worrying about that, and just realize that they're just virtue signaling. Basically, it's like yeah, so, and they'll have saying. long they'll have long discussions with you with philosophy and logic as to why 
you know, they'll ask questions that will put it in the perspective that they want it to be in so that they can give you only so many ultimatums as your only, uh, you know, it's a narrowing down of how they construct the argument and the questions they ask and everything. I mean, I, I've been through it with a lot of them. And my thing is I, I can, I, well, I don't want to say this in that way, but it seems to me like I can see a line of how often would I bull crap come into my way? You know, I've been down it because I was the bull, I was the bull crapper at one time. Yeah. So I've been around people that are mastered in that. I was raised around them. It's just you you look at these guys and they they seem like they know what they're talking about. Um, yeah. And so you're like, wow. Remember, God uses the simple people. Oh, yeah. No, 100%. Yeah, he, he'll he use, you know, not saying that he don't use any that are like that, but I'm saying he, he does it so that he's glorified. And that the wisdom Amen. of men, Amen. the wisdom of men is uh, made to be nothing. What, what did John say? I, God could raise these rocks to, to worship him. Yeah. Yeah. So watch out for these uh, pious scholarly men. Well, I wouldn't say that. that and the, you know, you don't want to go with that intent that just, you know, you don't want to connect things like they do. Uh, but yeah. Uh, if people are trying to, this is the way I look at it. If people are trying to go away from the simplicity of what God said, and they're going into some logical explanation that actually deters what God said, you know, or, or actually contradicts it. Don't listen to them. Yeah. I don't care how well they say it. And, and all. Well, there's a difference in, you, you know, offer correction, obviously, if you feel you can do it in love and if you feel you can do it in truth. Uh, you know, if you're not feeling comfortable and correct, because, I mean, I can say my first several years as a Christian, uh, I absolutely, thank God, uh, I, I didn't necessarily feel a need to go out and argue with people. Um, that it, it, honestly, it happened. Or now, I and me, I'm a argue. I I argue people on the internet for for years and decades before Christianity. Um, so the fact that I didn't is kind of. I mean, it did start to happen eventually, organically. Um, but that, thank God, again, was only as I come to know and also coming to learn. Because again, like as I've said, like a lot of my time was spent or in the early days arguing with uh, with with rabbis, uh, Orthodox rabbis on uh, the Jews for Jesus uh, message boards, and it's just Ooh. I've seen people now that have only been Christians for like you know a very short amount of time, just straight up, straight up trying to teach people, and it's like I can understand learning openly. Learning is good, but, you know. Yeah. I'll try I argue with people all the time, man. <laughs> but this is just recently I started doing that. Yeah. Apo apologetics. Yeah, once you know, once there's solid truths established, and I mean, obviously, once you know them, then you know them. Like, I, it's it's very funny. Like, my first, it was very early on, and I was I was at lunch break at work, and I was at I was at some mall. Um. And I, I, I stopped and there was a book that said Christian Science. And I had no idea that that's like uh, its own cult. And I walked in there like, look at all these books. And I bought their book. And I remember asking them the questions. And they were like, are you a pastor? And I remember like thinking that was such an absurd question. I was like, why would I be? A and, and I still have the book, actually. It's right over. I can show it to you. And, uh, and, uh, and, and as soon as I read it, and I read that she basically taught and this was from my my teachers, the people that I learned from, again, which is like the Chuck Smith. And and I can remember, because that's the thing. Anybody could have taught me that, that if anybody tries to tell you anything that's not in the Bible, don't trust them. Um, especially Amen. if it's something coming from them. If, you know, there's, there's, some, there's some very specific things that I don't care what comes after that, how good it sounds. That's like Jamie Russell. When I made a video speaking of, against... Seventh Day Adventism, and he said, "Well, have you how much? How many books have you read about it? 
How much scholarship do you know about some Vaivonism? I said, I only need to read, have read one book, right? To Amen. know, you know mm -hmm. about some Vaivonism. And there's there, because as soon as you say oh, just... these few things, that's it. it. That's all she wrote. There's there's no. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's, it's another issue. A lot of people will, um, they'll go into, uh, the interpretations rather than what the book actually says. Um, and this is not just like Christianity. I see this with a lot of Muslims, uh, rather than, you know, obeying their book because they, you know, there'll be, there'll be something really bad in there. Like, you know, Surah 929, kill the unbelievers wherever you find them. Uh, and to them, that looks bad, right? So instead of going by what the thing, you know, the, the, the verse actually says, they'll go by an interpretation. Um, and that just leads into uh, heresies, you know? Yes. But, and they have that in common too. I mean, it's it's like once you spot things like there's things that you don't, um, you know, in your hermeneutics and scripture, and everything. There's there's a base. I think a basic hermeneutic that you have to keep. One, you don't. You have to know who Jesus is, and by knowing who Jesus is, you'll know who God is. Um, and two, you cannot corrupt the gospel of Jesus Christ. We can't go against the promise. Um, we edify in belief. You know, we, we're under the um, law of faith in Christ. And we do not, that is the main hermeneutic that if we, if our studying leads us to do such a thing, we know we need to read it again. We need, we know we need a better understanding. Yeah. And why do you think um, my personal belief as to why there's certain passages, you know, God doesn't, because he, you know, He's, he's the creator, right? He's omniscient. He's all-powerful. Mm. He could have just made like a manual. Um, this is what you do. This is not what you don't do. But instead, he gave us the Bible, which... Um, it kind of tells well, you that, too. It does. It does. But yeah. there are some places where some things don't seem clear. So you have to look at other passages for um, more context and stuff. And I think he did that just so we would be, you know, We'd read his word more. <laughs> well, well, I'll yeah. tell you too. If it's clear, like the one thing that needs to always be clear, even if scripture is not, even if we think scripture is not clear, is that God is is supreme Lord, and just like in the same way with Adam and Eve, like they didn't need to know good from evil in order to logically be told to to disobey, you know, to not to do what God says. They didn't need to know good from evil. They just did what God said. Do what God mm -hmm. says, and you don't really need to worry about those specific things. Yeah, I believe they knew God was their creator. Yeah. I believe wholeheartedly they knew God was their creator. Don't you? Amen. I'm just imagining, like, I wonder if they saw... Like Jesus. Do you think that's what the tree of life was? Jesus? I don't know. Yeah. I've never thought of that yeah, actually. I really saw Jesus. Do you know about do you know um do you, do you know those early scriptures where it says uh that that, that they were, that he Adam and Eve heard or Adam heard the, the voice of the Lord Yes. Um, walking in the cool of the day. Yes. The tree of life. Yeah. Are you familiar with that one? And then, because, you know, yeah. we're, and this is even the way these original church fathers interpreted it too, um, that that is Jesus and, and also the spirit, like walking in the spirit. Like, because he wasn't, he wasn't born in flesh, but he was still had a form because like Colossians said, he's, he's the, the form of the invisible God. Um, right. Still, operating in spirit so you have form in spirit like they're never separated each of them are 100 percent fully god um but again like so that, that that's another verse that i think 
displays the Trinity. But yeah, so mm -hmm. I think uh, they they saw him. I think they actually saw the the. But you know, they didn't see the father. What they saw, right, they saw. Right. Um. What, and do you yeah, think they, they had? Hmm. Do you think they had kids? Well, do you think they were even able to have kids before the fall, or was that just the thing? Um, like, because there's some theories that uh, Melchizedek was was um, was, there, was the son of Adam and Eve before they fell. That's interesting. Hmm. Have you heard of that theory? No, no, I haven't. That is interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. But like, it's interesting. Know. But is is it? In scripture, well, that's like Tolkien uh, made the elves in Middle Earth basically a representation of a, a pre -Ad Adamic civilization before the fall, what humans would be like. Oh, is that? Oh, is Tolkien the one that made that? That came up with that? Well, I don't think he came up with they that. Are, as a are theology Tolkien. <laughs> point, maybe as a fantasy point. So, like, Okay, okay. Because I was wondering where that came from. I uh, that elves were um, pre, or like man before what, what, the fall. I, man before the fall. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he. Uh, I think he goes into that type of thing, and uh, well, I mean it's obvious, but the the uh, the lays of Valerian. Which is the poetic version of the the the, the Valaquenta, um, which is really good as far as like beautiful poetry. Oh, I love yeah. poetry, man! <laughs> it's actually not the Valaquenta; it's the whole Somerillion in poetic form, just about. Uh, you know, it is interesting, like with Mikelzadek, though. Uh, <laughs> he's without a father, without a mother, without descent, right? Having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. You know, he was a priest of the Most High God and King of Salem. So that is interesting that that's the information we have concerning Melchizedek and Christ being after mm -hmm. the order. And Christ being after yeah, the order of Melchizedek means that spiritually which he does clearly it that that doesn't necessitate it be literally true true that's the problem i have with something like that um because yeah but we, we still don't i mean I'm, I'm saying with what we've been given well because of that's exactly what i mean that's because of what we begin we what he what paul means is that oh we're supposed to believe this guy is a priest yet we're not given a genealogy Right. Well, I mean, so, yeah, yeah, but it, we are it, given it, record it, of Abraham. Jesus is just like that, you know, like, oh, you're the, you're out of, you, this is the priest of, 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 of Nazareth, you know, <laughs> instead of, uh, you know, the, the, the Levi, like, you, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's almost like, you know what I mean? I mean, the way Abraham treated him, though. Um, I'm trying to find this. Hold on. I want to make sure I say this right. It says, Melchizedek sounds like a name of a person, but it is really a title. Much like Pharaoh, Caesar, Cleopatra became titles. Because Metelzedek is a two-part word. The Melki is my king or king. The second part of Zedek means righteousness. Now you can put the whole word together. Melki Zedek means my king is righteousness. Or my king is righteous. This is the order in which the priesthood is supposed to be ordered after righteousness. Oh, hello, Michelle, Sherry. This isn't an anti-Calvinist stream, necessarily. 
don't let the thumbnail fool you if you, if you're a Calvinist. <laughs> is that, oh, Michelle is a Calvinist. We just happen to have that up. <laughs> What is the, what's the, I don't understand the reference, Matthew 5, 16. Uh, oh, the thumbnail? Or the, uh, how about that? Yeah, what's the, yeah, what is this, um, reference? Is, uh, it's uh, some, something Irenaeus is quoting there. Uh, I think he's quoting from it for some reason. Probably about the fact that you can actually do good. Like that's probably where he's he's going. Like you have free will, because he's he's arguing against the heresies that say you don't have free will, or that there's like certain men that are bound for for evil and certain men that are bound for darkness, um, like inextricably. Like that we're basically like a different race. So, so he's basically because in conjunction with I think. Glory and honor and your peace and every man that doeth good that doeth good work. So he's saying, yeah, you are able to do good work. If you didn't have it for you, you wouldn't be able to do good work. So it's a very simplistic argument, but it's mm. still valid nonetheless. Take yeah, heed to yourself. Okay, like he's okay. literally telling you, take heed to yourselves. Like how do you say you have no free will if God's saying, take heed to yourselves? You know, like all of these just very simple. Why call you Lord Lord when you do ye not do the things which I say? You know, like all of these are just as basic I mean, this is, you know, second century logic, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I never I never considered this in Psalms one ten, you know, uh one of David's Psalms. Uh it features both the Father and the Word in the opening verse. The Lord said to my Lord, the Father and the Word, sit at my right hand. That's very interesting. I never thought of that. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand. The Father and the Word in the opening verse. Oh, what do you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, amen, amen. The Lord said to my Lord. I'll tell you what, every single like church father I've done that's arguing about who Jesus is, the divinity of Jesus and the Trinity, they all quote that. I'm so used to quoting it here, like from reading those, reading the, the church and like, like hearing like it's, yeah, amen. It's great. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's getting late. I think I'm going to try and sleep now. Thank you for having me on. For sure, um, man. Yeah, Mary, thanks um, for coming on, bro. It'll be. Uh, hopefully I can join the next one. Yeah. You know, we're um, on every whenever. Sunday. Every Sunday around 8 Central Time or maybe 9, somewhere in there. Yeah, I don't, okay. I don't know why I don't stream those to my channel, too. Yeah. I think it's kind of like I want to just kind of I don't know. I said, I might as well just do it. <laughs> yeah, we just want to get the word out, right? Yeah, sure. yeah. Definitely great to see you, man. And, and yeah, uh, like I said, if, if you're ever like you're going, like if I mean, if, if, if like whatever, n no, no pressure. But uh, I, 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 you seem trustworthy enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as far as like, yeah, you know, you, you got mail. Etc. So yeah, just if you, if you ever need to, just hit me up. Yeah, you need to come in the pack, man. You need to come in here with the sheep. Start hanging out with the sheep, brother. Yeah, brother. And I'm really, mm -hmm. I don't really, I don't really give out my my stuff much. No. Um, but um, yeah, just uh, and, I, and I'm I'm pretty much an introvert anyway, so don't worry. I'm like, I'm gonna. You can really? ask Paul. You don't seem like the introvert type. I don't call Paul much. It's interesting. I pretend like I'm not very well. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, thank you. And stuff. This whole thing is just sort of, I don't know, some new compulsion for making 
videos and talking to people. <laughs> hey Amen. The, the Lord wills it. Amen. It's, it's preordained. Uh, I'm, yeah. <laughs> preordained, yeah. But uh, hopefully I start making videos soon. I'm thinking like something similar to what you you do you know voiceovers uh, but i don't know we'll just see i'll pray about it but um yeah see you guys god bless all right you have a good one right. take care good night i don't know if michelle see. heard what i said earlier about melchizedek but it sounds like a name of a person but it, it is really a title much like pharaoh caesar cleopatra became titles so all reference made to Melchizedek is in the titlement of what Melchizedek represents. It's not per se the person. Even though he was a person. The references made to Melchizedek is uh, my king is righteous. This is the order in which the priesthood is supposed to be ordered after righteousness. So Adam was the original king of the earth and head of the order. However, that role and the title have now been appointed to Yahshua, the Christ, as the head of the order. He is the head of the church or the order of the son of Elohim. I never I didn't know that Adam was the original king of the earth I guess he was given dominion over everything but so at one time he was I guess I don't need to antagonize John Calvin anymore I was gonna put up one. What was the verse you just said? What verse? Because I wanted to put up. I, I love these because I have this collection of these thumbnails. Oh, Psalms. Uh, My other video. This has a lot. Of, like these are all the quotes, Irenaeus quotes, to prove that Jesus is God and, and the doctrine is true. Yeah, the Lord said to my Lord, "Was it Psalms one ten? Let me see what verse that is." No, it's something you just said. Psalms one ten one. Psalms one ten one. And it was the Father. And the wow. word, Father and the word, the Lord said unto my Lord. Appearing of our Savior. That's another interesting uh, tidbit of, of cause again, it seems like what Irenaeus is claiming are these teachings from the apostles, or are the teachings of what Jesus was saying, oh, Taught him everywhere from the Old Testament where he spoke of him, you know. And one of the things is where it says, God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground, was prophetically speaking to the virgin birth. Isn't that interesting? That is interesting. Like he straight up says it. And God said, Let us make a man after our image and likeness. The corruptible, like this is, you know, the, the, them. I'm telling you, going through this stuff, these guys, and then me explaining, or, or you know, it, it's or, or me, it's like they are explaining it to me. Um, and a lot of this stuff, as far as you know, I already understood it, but you know, you you can never understand the Lord, <laughs> you're right. Mm. So you can only continuously come to to learn, and that you know, and and as 
that's what all this description of the corruptible must put on incorruption, mortal putting on immortality. I mean, and when we see what what Jesus did, you know, incorruptibility putting on corruptibility for our sake. If any, the precise opposite in order to that basically he's got to come down so that we can be brought up being found in the fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even unto the death of the cross yeah the lord said unto my lord in that phrase they say that that is the father in the word What are you reading? Can you, uh, a study on that? It, it, well, it, it just brought it up when I was looking at Melchizedek. Um, but yeah, it brought up that verse because it, it's it, it's it's alluding to that Melchizedek is Jesus Christ. Um, but Melchizedek's not a person; it's an order of a priesthood. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's I don't think it is. I mean, well, it, it, as far as what we can uh, definitely say, evidentially, because, um, again, I, I do think that what, what they're talking about is the fact that it's just simply that he has no generation. You know, I don't like interpreting that like he's he's Jesus. Yeah, we'll see. I think if he was, Paul would be more clear if he thought that, you know, instead of being like, if he would, like, by the way, Melchizedek, this dude's the Lord, you know? Amen. Uh, I don't think he is the Lord. I think he was a priest. I think he was put there to represent something for sure. And even if he represented the Lord himself. He could have done that as well. I mean, that's he did. That's what the Bible says. I know, but could could you look at Melchizedek like you would look at a pharaoh? A theophany is that the word? You know, the, say again. Uh, like like you looked at Pharaoh. You know. Um, yes, Pharaoh was a person, but is also a an order that he was. You know. Um, Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, um, I had a quick question for Kelvy. Sure. So, uh, so what? Okay, so who who are uh, something I've been meaning to ask? Who are some uh, so-called you know Catholic saints that weren't actually Catholic? You know, church fathers that Catholics claim, but that they weren't actually, they didn't have, they didn't believe in Catholicism. I believe that made sense. Well, I mean, and if you mean Catholicism, like praying to saints, saying Mary is special, um, you know, beyond the fact that you gave birth to Jesus. I mean, you know, I mean, she's a saint for sure, but like, I mean, basically, everybody so far that um, that I, I've I've even up into Eusebius. So I, I showed you on my channel. I have those five books called Theophania, which is him basically giving an apologetic to philosophers. Um, and, and then even up into so that, that, that other string of books I have, the one about the Trinity by Boethius in the year five twenty. And one of the books is like, it's like 10 minutes long. No, it's, it's like 15 minutes long or something. It's called On the Catholic Faith, right? Um, it's interesting, actually. I would suggest listen to it and tell me if you hear anything 
that sounds Catholic to you. The closest thing in it, in Boethius, is him seeming to hint maybe that Jesus remained, a, or I mean, sorry, that Mary remained a virgin. But I even yeah. think that in context of what he's talking about, it could mean that she was like, it's spiritually a virgin, like we all are, like in that regard. Um, but that's the, if like, but my, my, my point in that, because we did a live stream on that where we went through it. Like me, I think it was me and Kevin. Was it me and Kevin or was it me and you, Paul? We basically went through it and said, uh, yeah, I actually named the live stream the, you know, early church fathers and the, the or early Christian faith. And I crossed out the word Catholic because, no, and there, all these church fathers I'm reading, especially on my channel, even up into Asubius. Now, here's the thing, too. I'm about to release um, Ignatius letters. Like, I'm doing them. And one of the things he hammers on is follow your bishop, follow your bishop, follow your bishop. So Catholics will use that to be like, well, there you go. Now, here's the thing. If he, this guy telling people to, to do what their bishop says religion is, I don't have a problem with that. But but anyway, short answer, instead of me blathering on, so anybody want to get to bed. Um, I don't, these are, none of these early guys, at least up until the, the, the I mean, the 400s. At the 500 stuff starts stuff starts to get weird, but even up until that Boethius guy I'm talking about, I mean he was more Eastern. Well, no, he was so that's no, he wasn't. Boethius lived in Italy, but um, but yeah, it, but sh shorter story. I'm trying again. That he has a whole work called on the Catholic faith, and in the entire work, he doesn't describe anything that seems to be Catholic to me. At all, he just describes the gospel, and the you know that, that's all he talks about. Like he doesn't talk about mayor. Like he doesn't. He, he, there's nothing recognizable Catholic in there that isn't, as far as I'm concerned, recognizable is just for me. You know, I, I'm just I follow. I don't know what what you call me, some hillbilly Christianity. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but so anyway, I've had that, that. Sorry, to buck lather on like that, but um. But, but yeah, good, man. there's even even that guy Boethius in the year 520. He has a book called on Catholicism on the Catholic faith, and in it he doesn't even describe anything that he doesn't say. Uh, he actually he actually says, pay, "Follow your own bishop." That's what he tells them. He doesn't say, "Pay attention to the bishop, the main bishop at Rome." Now there is historical facts of the the different bishops at the different churches trying to assume authority over each other. That is a fact. So people to come along and say, well, they always had authority. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, there's a matter of, as you can even hear Irenaeus saying, well, Peter and Paul, they started this church in Rome, and therefore it's the headquarters of the church. But like I was talking to Paul about earlier, just because you decide, oh, this place is a good place to have a headquarters, just because we need to have a headquarters, um, that doesn't give you a right to start imposing all this crazy doctrine upon people, <laughs> right? Right. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I'll leave it up to you. I would suggest listen to some of that. Uh, those because again, I, I did a soup. Did, did you drop the link? Yeah, real quick. Thanks. And with that, fellas, I'm going to be right signing now. out. Yeah, I'm so tired. I'm gonna start blabbering here. And I hear you're from Michigan, Paul. Originally, I've lived in Tennessee a good part of my life too. Yeah. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah I've, I've I've lived about half my life in Michigan, half here, but I was born in Michigan. I've never really. I think we've been to Michigan, but I've never actually, uh, you know, just. But just because we we're driving through. <clears throat> the big mitten. Uh -huh. That's what it is. The big mitten. <laughs> I think Michigan is uh, a cool I'm state. Drop the whole playlist, and uh, and one of yeah, them is ahead. faith, but it also had the Boethius stuff. Man, I found it very edifying when I went through because when I'm reading this stuff, I'm learning it. Um, I think what I'm really what I'm looking for is like, did they believe, um, you know, like what Martin Luther believed that we're saved by grace through faith. 
you know, and not not by church attendance or by doing the sacraments and stuff like that. Um, Actually, so, it's interesting. One of the lines that Ignatius does on who I'm doing now um, is uh, he actually says people that attack the grace of but people that try to claim that they're that they're justified by 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 you know their own works you know they attack the grace of, of our Lord Jesus like he literally says that that's Ignatius one um, seven yeah um, there's you know even in in Irenaeus in one eighty you know I've seen because because as far as I mean I'm not sure what if as far as your your worry on there is losing your salvation or if you're just looking to to have ammunition um or if you're arguing against people or if you yourself are not sure and are trying to see what christians believed uh um, no i'm just uh i'm just curious I mean, uh, you know. other people that come out because i've heard a lot of people that claim oh you know church fathers believe this and that and i don't yeah, think it's yeah. cut dry a lot of times um, for example, with the though no, they believe you can lose your salvation, and it's like, well, what did they even mean? But because there, there are places. Yeah, in I, I do remember looking that up a while back. What did the early church fathers believe about um, uh, eternal security? And you know, a bunch of I, I couldn't really find anything that. Uh, yeah, it, it's kind of amazing me. how much they don't talk about it, because. Yeah, in their in their and it's like why wouldn't they talk about such a thing? Well, because in their view, because if 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 you kind of read between the lines of what they go into, I mean, if you have twenty five hours to spare, go ahead and listen to the whole the, the Irenaeus against heresies. <laughs> Although I I do have another playlist that's not uh that's not the twenty five hours that I did that kind of sums up the against heresies and like little smaller videos. Um, well, you can find that. They show me a link that too. Um, I'm not sure because YouTube is really crappy with its navigation systems. Hey, fellas, did you put I, I'm, I'm signing I'm out, talking. fellas. I'm going to get off here, and you guys have a good night, blessed night, man. It was awesome. Thanks, Kelby, for doing this. Yeah, sure, man. and a mere praying for you, brother. And yeah, anytime. Thank Kelby so much, has man. my Kelby has my number, and you're more than welcome, Kelby, to give it to him if he wants it, and. Uh, if you guys get in touch or whatever, call me, call Kelby anytime. Uh, Kelby would be a good one to talk to, though. And, uh, Appreciate it, brother. Yep, you guys take always, care. I, always, I can always, um, I can always uh, trust you guys to have my back. Amen. But, yeah. Thank you, have man. Good sure. Have a good one. All right, you have a good one. I'm just gonna um, post the. So did, you, did you post the links in the comments section? Uh, on. Oh yeah. Okay, I see it. One of those and is. Another thing. Um, sorry, but you know, even if church fathers say one thing, but the Bible says another thing, I think you would. We should go by what the Bible says, right? Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, we shouldn't go by what, uh, you know, anything that's non canonical. Well, two of the most recent ones I did, uh, well, no, one of the most recent ones I did, the letter of Clement. Um, it seems to me he's writing in the year 70, which means he's writing before the Gospel of John. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, people argue with the Gospel of John, but he's writing for some books of the Bible, Clement, yeah. and that's considered scriptural. Um, and there was also heretics having their own writings before John was even dead. So it's interesting. It's interesting to think about when it comes down to scripture. Even even in Paul's time, there were people, I think, forging his letters. Yeah, and if you think about just the logistics of it. Um, and, and, and again, in, in reading all these early people and just listening to them talk about how they're sending letters to themselves, like, like right now I'm doing, a, 
I'm doing polycarp. There, do, do, I don't know if you're tired. Like, do you want me to show you an example of what I'm doing? Yeah, go ahead. This is what, because uh, not polycarp, but uh, Ignatius has uh, um, seven letters that he wrote when he. Do you know anything about Ignatius? Um, no, I'm fairly new to all these uh, all these early church fathers. You know, I'm not. I'm not very. I'm not really. To um, so in one of he was a bishop of bishop of um, Antioch, and in one hundred seven A.D. Uh, he he was basically captured and, and sent to Rome to be martyred. Uh, and when he was on his way there, he wrote seven letters to to some churches. Um, and uh, let me stop being stupid. So here's I'm making. Well, I'm I'm still making them. I'm on the Church of Smyrna. Um, but he like he writes. He tells you where he is. He tells you what's going on. Um, and he's basically like ready to die um, for, well, let me find the actual, uh, where do I have to save it? Because the one, the coolest one I think I did is the one to Rome. So here, let me, uh, I don't have them published yet. Because I, I, I was, I couldn't figure out if I was going to do them all at once um, or just release them separately. Um, like as because like some of them are ten minutes long, but I decided I'm just gonna do them all at once as well. Like all together, like an hour and a half. To the church, which has obtained mercy through the majesty of the Most High Father and Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son, the church which is beloved and enlightened by the will of Him that wills all things, which are according to the love of Jesus Christ. Pray. It's the church in Rome. Worthy of obtaining her every desire. This tells you what day he writes it. Worthy of being deemed holy. Wow. And which thank praise to the Father through Jesus Christ. This is something I could listen to, like them all. That I a, willingly in die the background. Unless you hinder me, I beseech of you not to show an unseasonable goodwill towards me. He's saying, "Don't I'll rescue me. I want to be killed." A wild beast. Through whose instrumentality it will be yeah. granted me to attain to God. I am the wheat of God, and let me be ground by the teeth of the wild beast that I may be found the pure bread of Christ. Rather, entice the wild beast that they may become my tomb and may leave nothing of my body so that when I have fallen asleep in death, I may be no trouble to anyone. And then shall I truly be a disciple of Christ when the world shall not see so much as my body. Entreat Christ for me that by these instruments I may be found a sacrifice to God. I do not, as Peter and Paul, issue commandments unto you. They were apostles. I am but a condemned man. They were free, while I am, even until now, a servant. But when I suffer... I shall be the freed man of Jesus. I shall rise again, emancipated in him. And now, being a prisoner, I learn not to desire anything worldly or vain. From Syria, even unto Rome, I fight with beasts, both by land and sea, both by night and day. Being bound to ten leopards, I mean a band of soldiers who, even when they receive benefits, show themselves all the worse. But I am the more instructed by their injuries to act as a disciple of Christ. Yet am I not thereby justified? May I enjoy the wild beasts that are prepared for me, and I pray they may be found eager to rush upon me which also I will entice to devour me speedily and not deal with me as with some whom out of fear they have not touched. But if they be unwilling to assail me, I will compel them to do so. Pardon me in this. I know what is for my benefit. Now I begin to be a disciple 
and let no one of the things invisible or invisible envy me that I should attain to Jesus Christ. Let fire and the cross, let the crowds of wild beasts, let tearings, breakings, and dislocations of bones, let cutting off of members, let shatterings of the whole body, and let all the dreadful torments of the devil come upon me. Only let me attain to Jesus Christ. All the pleasures of the world and all the kingdoms of this earth shall profit me nothing. It is better for me to die on behalf of Jesus Christ than to reign over all the ends of the earth. For what shall a man be Amen. profited if he gain the whole world but lose his own soul? And really, really puts us to shame, dude. <laughs> yeah, when I when, when I got to the point where, and yeah, not to keep on plugging my own channel here, but when I did this video here on the, you should really check out this this one on the martyrs. It's like yeah, it's like two hours. Claiming, who shall separate us from Christ? Shall tribulation or affliction or persecution like check out how I... on the martyrs in Palestine by Eusebius of Caesarea? Those holy martyrs of God who loved our Savior and Lord. Well, see, I have it separated. God supreme. Um, each one, <clears throat> Epiphanius or Epiphanius, Agapius, like each of these, and some of them are shorter than others. See, um, different like channels. Like if you just go to one. Against each other in order that they might obtain a sight both boys and men and old men together and all grades of women so that even the modest virgins who kept to their own apartments went out to see this sight and the whole city together even with the very children as well gave glory to the god of the christians alone confessing with a loud voice the name of christ who had given strength to the martyr in his yeah, life so I'm I'm for the transition to the next one that his death had showed prodigies to mm. all he held such was the termination of the history um, of Anius on the second of the month of read Fox's Book of Martyrs is observed to this day. Yeah. The is it a good book? Um, I've been meaning to read it for the longest time. It's like what had befallen the martyr Epiphanius. So after a short time, um the there's a, there's a, was on the father and on the mother's side became an audio professor book whose name was Alosis. He too, as he contended against the things which I have described that what I have related must be attributed to a fabled the confession of Antoninus and Zabinus and Germanus and Menathus in the sixth year of the persecution in our days in Caesarea Actually, let me just go. Let me the confession you. of Procopius in the first year of the persecution in our days the first, the confession of Alpheus and Zacchaeus and Romanus. The confession obviously the means. Year of the persecution in our days. <laughs> it happened at the same time that the festival, which is celebrated on the 20th year of the emperor's reign, was at hand, and a pardon was announced at that festival for the offense of those who were in prison. The confession of Timotheus in the city of Gaza in the second year of the persecution in our days. It was the second year of the persecution, the confession of Agapius and of the two Alexanders and of the two Dionysiuses and of Timotheus and of Romulus and of Paisus. In the second year of the persecution in our days and the, the confession of Epiphanius in the third year of the persecution which took place in our years in the city of Caesarea. That bitter viper and wicked and cruel... Uh, Kelby, have you... Yes. Have you heard of uh, Saint Anastasius? I think is his name, Saint Anastasius. Um, are you thinking of Athanasius? No, it's 
Uh, here, let me let me type it. I'm not, I'm actually not I, I'm not familiar with Anas, any Anastasius Anastasius. I mean, it's not that I can think of. He was a he was a convert to. I'm not sure if he was like a biblical Christian or is you know he's. <clears throat> Apparently he's a Roman Catholic, but I'm not sure what he was belie- what he his beliefs are, because um, it's it didn't really specify on the articles that I read. Um, You're sure it's not Athanasius? Yeah, no, I'm sure. There's because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, martyrs for Christ. There was. Oh, for sure. And this entire work here, this history of the martyrs in Palestine, that's literally just an account of because because Asubius, this is the guy, same guy who wrote the church history, you know, in the in the biography of Constantine. He lived through this. He actually says, "I still bear the scars from this this time." Um, wow. Like, and he, and he lived through the uh, this these persecutions. The, look, wow. this, look at the year; it was three oh six. It was basically ten years of persecution. He's he's taking you through, you know, the major persecutions of people that he he knows about, you know, through all of it. Like it starts at three oh six. The very last one is uh, what we'll year's the last one? Three twenty five. Sylvanus and brethren. The confession. Holocaust more excellent than all sacrifices. And t- oh, that one was like they had like a whole like, there were so many of them burned alive. Like look there at the also much people with them who came from other places. These are short. The confession of Eris and Primus and Elias in the sixth year of the persecution in our days at Eshkelon. So yeah, I think it ends the former on the fourteenth of the same. On this day, some Egyptian martyrs of God were seized before the gates of Ashkelon, and because when they were questioned as to who they were, they acknowledged that they were Christians and confessed that they had undertaken the journey and were come from their own country for the purpose of taking sustenance to the confessors who were in Cilicia. They also were brought as malefactors before the judge, for the keepers of the gates of the city were cruel men and laid hold upon these martyrs and took them before Hermelianus, the governor, because he was also, up to that time, still over the people of Palestine, and he decreed a cruel sentence against them, and some of them he ordered to have their eyes and their feet injured by fire and steel, and some of them to be delivered over to death by the sword. But one of them, whose name was Eris, was consummated in his confession by a fierce fire, and Primus and Elias were beheaded by the sword. The confession of Peter, who was surnamed Absalom, in the seventh year of the persecution in our days in the city of Caesarea. On the tenth day of the month of Canaan, the latter, Peter. It's just I, I just find it hilarious. The, the more they killed them, the the bigger the church grew. You know, the bigger Christianity became. Yeah. Exactly. It's it's amazing. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it's like God's perfect, perfect plan in action. Exactly. But then, uh, yeah, then the then the Roman Catholicism happened, <laughs> and then heresy started spreading. Off. Well, heresy was already there. You know, I don't know if you saw the. The earlier art, what we were thinking about in the stream, when we were looking at the the churches and how they were. Spreading. Oh yeah, yeah. I was, I was, I was, I was here during that. Yeah, that's where a lot of these were. Uh... But when it got to Rome, because you got to figure, God. Wanted it to go to Rome, like all. This is the way 
all things get spread out. Um, and did you hear what I said about like you know like you know Americans get into Christian nationalism and say, well, America's look at what look at look at how the Bible was spread. Look at how Christian how Christian nation or how Christian of a nation America has been throughout history. It's obvious. It's obvious. You know, Americans will tell you that God has used this. You know, they, they can, some Americans couldn't even imagine that, that America is not even referenced in scripture. Right. Um, now, obviously Rome is referenced in scripture, but it, it makes sense to me that when, when Christians went from being this backwater persecuted people and all of a sudden, you know, Constantine comes in because that persecution we were just looking at ended with Constantine. So that's why Asubius, who has scars from that persecution, is writing praises of that emperor who came in and put an end to that. Now, because even when he put an end to it, just because Constantine put an end to it, and people think Constantine was some great theologian. He was just a, he was a general and he was a politician, just like any other Roman yeah. emperor. And he had enemies. apparently apparently he um he fell into the heresy of uh, Arianism, I think. Um, he so he ended up knowing. It, it, uh, so just real, my opinion of it is there was a tug of war over him between Arian yeah. bishops because Asubius was a uh, was was a Trinitarian. Um. And apparently, I think the now about I, I know I recently knew this. The guy who baptized Constantine, I believe, was an Arian. So there you go. But the guy who taught Constantine was a Trinitarian. Um, now the guy who taught and and advised Constantine's son. Um, was an Arian also, and his name was also Asubius, but he was Asubius of Nicomedia, uh, rather than Asubius of Caesarea Maritimna, which is where that persecution that we were just uh, listening about took place right here, just in that little area. Uh, okay. Wait, where's that? Oh, that's in um, the Jerusalem. Uh, Jerusalem is right here. I always, yeah, I always, I, I always feel, I, I forget, it's not right on the coast of uh, the Mediterranean Sea. Yeah, it's in the middle of nowhere, where you would never expect it. There's not even, like, a, a water, the, the water source is, like, some underground spring. It's, like, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always, I always wonder, like, I'm like, why did God choose this spot? <laughs> You know, to be born and to live. It's amazing. Because, but yeah, I think there's a different reason. Oh, absolutely. Personally, I would never live there, but <laughs> that's just me. It's pretty wild. Well, especially, I think, uh, or I've heard, you know, like, ever heard, like, well, all the languages of the world. Like the ones on one side of the Jerusalem, like go from right to left. The ones on the other side go from left to right. <laughs> Man, I don't know. If that's proven oh yeah. Right. And like, it's like the land that connects all three continents. Yeah. You know, Asia, Asia, Europe, and um, Africa. So it's like. God's way of saying, you know, the gospel is for all, all races, all colors of people. I don't know. <laughs> oh, for sure. <clears throat> I was, I think, bringing it over to the Gentiles and then onward just to the rest of the world. Yeah. But yeah, you can, like, the Arian bishops. Yeah, you're right. But as far as the, well, it's like, yeah, by the time, like I said, the fact that Constantine put an end to those persecutions, I don't think it was necessarily out of the, 
It might have been for the kindness of his heart. Like, so this is the thing. I used to really hate Constantine big time. Um, but I'm really good because his, his mother was a Christian. I think his mother was actually a Christian. Like, I, have, I don't really have a doubt thinking she wasn't a Christian. Um, now, what kind of Christian she was is a whole other story, but I do think she was actually a Christian. As far as like being saved, like, I don't think she was like some fake Christian, whether he was or not. But again, he was a politician. And before he became the sole emperor, there were three other emperors, three, three co emperors. They were all four of them. It was a tetrarchy. So, you know, he killed me. He took over for these other guys, you know, like, and all this kind of. So there were just, there was all this stuff going on. Like, because I'm just saying, I know what my misconceptions were of Constantine. I'm not saying that you have them uh, specifically. I'm just thinking of in general when it comes to Constantine, um, the way people look at him as sort of this like horrible guy who like was was out like, working for the satan to to get christianity like i don't think it was like that at all um i think by the grace of god m my personal opinion i was just like i think by the grace of god constantine is saved and he was you know and i think it was the bishops themselves that pulled him into it um because people were like oh he used christians just to get political power it's like well sure he did that's what people did back then you can't use that as like a, a something to blame a person about. Um, that's what that's what his job was to do. But at the same mm -hmm. time, what Christ, how Christians interacted with him, I'm not going to call those Christians morons for for saying like it, it, in the same way. I mean, maybe I, I don't know. It depends on how far you're willing to go. Because I think they kind of viewed him like a lot of Christians view Trump, right? <laughs> To where it's like, well, he's not a, he's not a saint, you know. Right, right. But you want to come in because you know the argument. It's like, well, at least he doesn't. He's not a blatant atheist, you know, or a Muslim apologist or whatever kind of. You know, at least he's not all these different things. And it's like, yeah, come in and be like, yeah, clearly he's being used by the Lord anyway for that. I mean, the the Jews because that's that's how the Jewish people would view a Messiah. Because they saw Cyrus the Great coming in and freeing them, allowing them to return back to the land, you know, um, when he issued. Do you know about that? Yeah, I'm no, actually, yeah, I know. About that. Dude, if you don't, if you're not, if, if you feel like you're totally like uneducated on like Christian stuff, um, you know, if you're telling me like you know you're really new and you're, if you want, if if you want to sit, if you want to just straight up get into it and just straight up talk about stuff from the from the get i mean i would love to do that dude. as far as like because i i'm not sure how 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 much i would say would just you know i don't want to be like talking talking over you or talking no. past you or whatever you know my knowledge is very it's, just, it's surface level <laughs> um yeah, because I, I know you said you grew up with a religious kind of background, but I think I kind of, am, when I hear that, because I wasn't growing up in any kind of religious background. So for me to hear you, like you grew up in any religious, I assume like, oh, you were taught scripture and stuff, but I'm guessing it wasn't, that's not the case. <laughs> no. Because everything I've learned, I've basically taught myself, like scripture wise, I've taught myself um, in the last 10 years. Um, I mean, you know, going around studying what, I can study and trying to yeah. you know, try and be an objective as objective as possible. Cause I never had, I mean, to, to say like, Oh, I gave Catholicism a fair chance. Probably wouldn't be fair. Right. For me to say, Oh, I tried every different thing. However, I did look at Baha'i. I don't know if I ever told you that, that the first thing I ever looked at um, when I first decided, Hey, maybe I should try one of these organized religions <laughs> and see what happens. Like, see if God is. You looked really into, um, looked into and, Baha'ism? Yes. Um, wow, and interesting. Part of it was because the not, and, and here's why. And maybe the either God was leading me through it or because because through it, eventually I came to where I came to. But unless the devil was kind of nudging me and the, then, then God turned it on its head, which is more, maybe more likely. But because I had learned, yeah, for yeah. some reason, I was looking at the the symbols of different religions, and I actually can't remember if it was because I was decided to look at religions, and I was just looking at, or I decided to join a religion, and then, therefore, then I was looking at symbols, 
But the fact that it was a nine-pointed star, and I was a pagan um, before, which I'm sure you've heard me talk about. Oh, um, no, I didn't know that. <laughs> What's that? No? I didn't know about that, no. Oh, yes, I was an absolute practicing pagan. I mean, I've used to do witchcraft, past life regressions, uh, shamanistic, blah, 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 I've spoken oh, to yeah. demons and fairies, whatever you want to talk, uh, call it. So yeah, any questions about that? <laughs> I don't have any secrets. Wait, so like, uh, we're, or is there like any? Um, is that just a general term, pagan? Uh, yeah. Or were you part of like a, a specific I group? I never used when I was a pagan because <laughs> it was so generalized. So, I mean, but the general word so for you, that, by the way, is means you know. And the original term was meant like a kind of like a hillbilly, like somebody who lived off in the, the like lived in the hills, um, yeah. not, not live in the city, therefore unsophisticated. Um, now, obviously, because Christianity was a more urbanized religion, so that's where the missionaries, you know, came and, and grew. Um, so therefore, most of the people that lived outside of the cities and the villages become known, were usually the, the unbelievers. Right. As far as pagan the poor. Yeah, you're basically you're just a warlock. <laughs> oh well, that was yeah. I was very much into um, well, because my view on a lot of it was was each each kind of person's of their own culture, and so each religion. Because I, I I viewed Christianity as sort of like a Middle Eastern uh, Jewish culture, and I, I I thought the Jewish people were great. Uh, I I remember being like, you know, they they're one of the oldest peoples around. They haven't changed. Hey, respect to that. You know, I would call like like Celtic people my people, right? You know, I'd be like, my people have already, you know, they lost their culture. Uh, like St. Patrick's Day, I used to wear black <laughs> and walk around yeah. and talk people about the how the Druids and, and the Celtic uh, religion was wiped out by those evil Christians, uh, you know, all this kind of stuff. <laughs> and um, yeah, I used to... I used so to I, I'm assuming you're Irish. Pagan. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm assuming you're Irish. Uh, I, I, I have Irish. I have some Irish ancestry, yes. Okay, that makes I'm sense. Really, <laughs> my, most of my family is just, you know, Baltimore people. So it's just sort of like, like there, there's, no, there's, I don't have any, there's no upbringing in my family where somebody had a, sh, you know, had a shillelagh from, you know, like, if, if you did my genealogy, like, I think the, it was like, uh, what was it, 45% or something like that? I don't remember. Along with like British and Western European, um, that sort of thing. But what, and, what is the, um, what's the significance of the nine pointed star? Is it a pagan symbol? Supposedly that was the symbol of Baha'i, uh, right? Yeah, like, it is. Like, um, I'm wondering, well, like, what I'm wondering. Well, for, for nine, you know, the numerology and that sort of thing for paganism, basically, that's why I was kind of like, oh, that's that's neat, a nine pointing star. I wonder what that looks like. Um, oh, so then okay. I looked at it and I was like, okay. Then I started looking up the religion and I was like, so it might have been looking at Baha'i that actually made me think, like, hmm, maybe I should just check out one of these religions. Now, I also I did get into the Islam first, though, because. Because when it came to Baha'i, I don't remember exactly why. What made me decide to say no? This doesn't make sense. Like I, I can't think of some deep theological reason, you know, where I was like, "Whoa, it doesn't make sense because they, these religions contradict mm -hmm. each other." Blah blah blah. Um, but I think if it, if it, if Baha'i, but if I'm thinking of it now, if Baha'i said, "Oh, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam are." Are like all kind of this, like from the same message or whatever, or different met or like the same kind of thing in a way. And I didn't really know much about Islam, so I was like, maybe I just need to look. So it might have been that. I don't necessarily remember, but yeah, but Islam, it kind of connects. Um, Islam just instantly didn't take long for me to get rid of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I wish more people were like that, but. Um, yeah, you go on to like, yeah, I was looking at apparently Baha'ism is the fourth Abrahamic religion. 
Um, I don't know if there's any more. Oh, but... Wings, man. Good to see you, brother. Well, so-called Abrahamic religion, you know, Judaism, Christianity, I feel like are the only two genuine Abrahamic faiths. <laughs> well, actually, no. I think Christianity, Christianity is the only Abrahamic faith. What's that? I remember resenting that fact that, like, they're like, oh, why is it just the Abrahamic faith? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, it, it was <laughs> at one point much later. I, I You know what? I, it, was, it was about 2007 uh, when, because I became a Christian in 2009. But I remember it, around 2007 ish, it hit me like all because I had already, I had pretty, pretty well developed beliefs. In um, in reincarnation and the way that it worked and different operations of the soul and blah 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 blah, based off of whatever, and and it dawned on me when I looked at like Buddhism and I looked at Hinduism and I looked at all these major world religions and I didn't agree with any of their views of reincarnation. I'm like, what am I making this stuff up or what? You know, I was like, I looked it up. The only person that I agreed on me was like. William Butler Yeats, like, like, like very few who have to be Irish. So go figure. Uh, like <laughs> a lot of these transcendental, and now later on, one way later, like looking into it, a lot of these views did seem to come from the same group of people. So it's not, there's because I mean I, I did come to my own conclusion with my own sort of natural way of looking at things. However, I can't say that I didn't come to to be influenced by. A lot of the same if you ever look like i could i can get into like you know these these influences that are kind of like behind the scenes um as far as just people that you know if you've ever looked up ascended masters there's all this kind of stuff that i never i was never even aware of that like they're all it's all because all these different books they all seem different oh there's sky magic and fairy magic and dragon magic and blah 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 blah, blah. you know it's all rotated around the same crap um and the same, the same people. It all stems from the same branches. Uh, and then when I realized also that all these different religions from these different cultures, because I was in the Celtic religions, you know, I was like Roman religion. I was like, they, I, was, I basically thought that all these different people groups had tapped into to the truth. They tr they tapped into the godly truth. And that's just what we're all at the trough of truth, and we all have our own thing. And then, it, and then at one point later on, too, it dawned on me that oh, they found Phoenician writings of like filigrees from, from, you know, from Phoenician religious writings in Italy that were put. So and then it's so it's it also stands the reason that because I would hear arguments from people saying all religions come from Babylon, all religions come from this one source. And if you go along with the Noah story, um, it does. It all comes from the same thing. It's all, I would say there's nothing yeah, new on it. It's all just a mockery. No, you're right. Especially with the flood story. There's all these different, um, they found all these different, uh, you know, cultures that, that have the same, like, not the exact same, but they all talk about a, a worldwide flood. Um, and so, you know, that just doesn't come out of thin air, right? Uh, same with you know science, this, mythology. Now, All mythology comes from somewhere. Science now as it seems to have verified or validated that there's a point where the entire world was flooded with water. Really, that's right interesting. Up. And that there's water under the the ground, under the deeps. Like um, water. In the, the earth, crust. in the earth's crust. Oh wow! Yeah. Also, like, um, yeah, you know how the Bible mentions the waters above. I'm I think they discovered that too. That there's water. There's like a sea much bigger than our sea, an ocean, uh, in um, like above Earth, so somewhere in space. I don't, I don't know where exactly, but um. Yeah, I mean, the Bible talks about that as well. So it's like <laughs> science is slowly catching up, you know? 
What are you talking about? The earth thing. Uh, are you talking about like the clouds? Or uh, sky? No, no, no. You know what? Uh, the Bible talks about the firmament and the water is above the firmament. Okay. Are you a flat earther then? Am I? Uh, well, not really. But I'm, I'm not. I'm not like, like a. Space I don't really know. Or you think space is like is fake? No. Well, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it could be. Pretty, I, I, here's the thing. I don't have a. I don't have a real. Uh, well, sure. I don't I mean, have if you don't a firm believe. belief. If, you, if you're not I don't have a firm yet, belief in any of convinced, then you know I'm not gonna. I can't. I'm not gonna shame you for not having been convinced. Uh, you know, per se. So don't, 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 don't hesitate to, you know, don't, don't, don't let my, uh, my crowing, uh, you know, bore you. Yeah, here's, here's the thing. Like, I think one day we'll, we'll find out. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not like, uh, I'm leaning more towards like, uh, uh um, what is it? Like the dome shape theory. Well, if you're referring but, to something that existed in Genesis, uh, and also during the time of Noah, I mean that certainly doesn't mean that that needs that that needs to be right now because no, I mean I don't think that there's literally floating water above our heads like that. But what I do think is that if you look at the Hebrew words for for water, it I, I think the general concept, notion of, notion of because it's, it's it's the word you know mayim, which seems to be plural. And so I think it, it is understood to be this amorphous thing, not necessarily H2O, but some sort of expansiveness um, of something. Again, not H2O, not even wetness, but just something. So in Hebrew, the word mayim, because the word for, for heavens is shamayim, which means, up, uh, from what I understand, upward heavens, or I'm sorry, upward waters. Right, like that's where you get in firmament. But again, then you have to say, all right, well, does waters then mean H two O? If you're going to, because again, the word for heavens, shamayim, is literally, literally, if you're going to look at Hebrew, the the upward waters. Um, now, again, I think it's just it's just describing forces in a way, um, but I think it's also stands the reason, you know, because I, you know, if somebody talking to me about a, a, a dome or something like that i think that that works but again i i think that there's for for me personally i think that there i've seen more than enough evidence for me to think that it's good there has to be something else besides you know if if it means that space is fake like i firmly believe for example that man landed on the moon like i i totally believe that so just just fyi so knowing that that discounts a lot of other stuff but then if, it's, if, you're, if, if you hear me say that and then you say, well, then how do you possibly believe in the Bible? Um, you know, that's a, I guess that's a fair question, but I'm prepared to answer that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not dogmatic about it. Boy. Well, I mean, really that's, I, mean. Believe in, I literally believe in fairies and dragons. So, I mean, I would have no problem believing that the world was really you know, of some, this, you know, whatever, some, some, some different, some, some massive difference. It's just, I guess, got to look at evidence and I can't think that God is that big of, of just letting things get out of hand to where, and it, 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 there's just so much extra to it again. Like it's, <laughs> yeah. like I, I do no, think I it know, is. Man. Well, uh, I would love to talk more, but I'm getting tired. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely. It's like six a.m. Yeah, yeah. I want to have a, I want to have more discussions like this, and I have a lot more questions. So, um, worth forget. I'm gonna write yeah, down. I would like to have more streams. I just I can never kind of just I don't know just make my yeah. Please do, I'm, man. I'm I'm good. So if you ever if you, yeah, if, tell you what if you, if you ever like. If you ever want to send me a message or something and be like, yo, have a stream about whatever. If you have a question, maybe if you want to have a stream specifically about it, I mean, that'd be cool. Oh, okay. 
All right. Yeah, I'll do that then. I save your number. Um, well, I pasted it into my. I copied and pasted, but I haven't saved it. Um. Yeah. So, do I save you as Kelby or what? Is that your real name? Yeah, you can put Sean if you want. I mean, Kelby works. Whatever. I think I'll Sean. do. I think I'll do Kelby because I might forget who, who, because uh, I just know you as Kelby. I don't. Know. So, yeah. Um. Uh, I can't remember the thing. Yeah, I was gonna write down this question I had for next time, but I can't remember. Anyway, all right. I'll ask. I'll, I'll see if I can remember later. Um. Yeah. Thanks for having me on, man. Um. It's all good, appreciate man. you. To appreciate your knowledge. <laughs> Amen. All glory to God. Appreciation. All right, man. You uh, have a good one. I'll see you hopefully soon. And um, God bless. God bless. Peace out.